Welcome to Competitive Cake Duo, the live sugar debate. I'm Jody, your moderator for today's four hour live event. We are celebrating the launch of our new website, Creative Cake Design, and we are here with two amazing women who are gonna be battling today to outdo each other's cake designs. We're gonna watch as they show amazing skills and tons of twists and turns along the way, and we will be giving away amazing <laughs> prizes throughout these four hours. Let's learn just a little bit more about these amazing women. I'm gonna be stepping in and off camera throughout the day today, but we wanna learn more about both of you. So let's start with our managing editor, Rachel Tufel. Thank you, Jody. I'm Rachel Tupel, and I am just as excited as everyone here on set. We have so much to celebrate with getting this new brand up and running. So we hope that you enjoy Creative Cake Design as much as we do, because we've worked really hard to put it together for you. In addition to helping with creative cake design, I am the owner of Intricate Icing's Cake Design in Denver, Colorado. I have won many accolades <laughs> along <laughs> my way um, and uh, it have participated in many competitions previously, like Food Network Challenge, where I've met my dear friend, <laughs> Anne. <laughs> so Anne, would you like to share a little about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Anne Heap, and I am from uh, Morristown, New Jersey. And I have, well, I had a shop called Pink Cake Box, and I still do some cakes. I've been caking for a long time now, since about 2005. Mm -hmm. um, when I quit my job in advertising, I went to culinary school. And like Rachel, I've done quite a few competitions, um, but this one seems like it'll be more fun. <laughs> so I'm excited to be fun. here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So there's a little bit of information that we need to share with you about how this competition is going to run, including how you're going to help us decide how to create our cake. So let's throw it back over to Jody so she can share some of the technical information about today's debate. Awesome. Thanks, ladies. Um, so we want to take a moment to thank our amazing sponsors today, Cake Safe, Fat Daddio, uh, Bake Deco, Semi, Cakes and Confections, and Good Cook. And the reason that's important to know who those folks are is because every 30 minutes we're going to be giving away some awesome cake decorating swag. Who doesn't love some swag, <laughs> right ladies? Um, from our sponsors. So there's a little bit of information here on how to enter. So stick around because you won't want to miss this. Um, we also have an amazing free holiday coupon bundle um, that you can download from our sponsors. You're going to click on the link in the description to the download and the coupons are going to save you some amazing, uh, fantastic, they're going to save you a lot of money on some fantastic supplies and products. But before we get into all of that, let's do a brief intro into Creative Cake Design. Creative Cake Design is your online resource for all things cake, where you can find everything you will need from basic instruction to advanced techniques. It's a community of enthusiasts, and these folks want to learn more about how to create beautiful projects with edible mediums. At Creative Cake Design, we know that cake decorating goes way beyond just being a hobby. It is art. And we want to be your go-to online place to nourish your creativity by getting inspired with project ideas, learning new techniques, and connecting with your fellow cake decorators. With the launch of this new site, we want to celebrate by creating some amazing cakes. The theme for today's competition is celebration. Woo! Perfect for this time <laughs> of year, for sure, right? Um, so as we're going to get started here in just a minute, but we want to give you a little more information on how this competition is going to work. These two amazing ladies are going to individually create a tiered celebration themed cake that we're going to present to you, the viewers, at 145 Central for all of you to see. You guys are going to decide the winners of the sugar debate. I want to direct your attention to the chat box. If you're watching on Creative Cake Design's website, all you have to do to participate in the live polls is use the navy blue chat box under the video to type out your response. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can use the chats there too. We will be posting questions throughout the debate to guide the design of both of these cakes. And the first question is being posted right now. This question happens to be about style. So we want your input. Please post your answers in the comments section as quickly as possible and one of our team members will tally the votes and share the decision. And guess what? Anne and Rachel are going to be finding out as you guys decide what's going on. So these ladies are going to have to think on their feet and adjust their cake design accordingly. Oh my gosh, 
It's already coming in, I believe. They're going to text me the <laughs> responses here. We're all waiting with bated breath. Yeah, we'd really like to know what yes. we're making. We'd really like to know. <laughs> really so the style question is, do we want fun or glamorous? I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you have a preference, fun or glamorous? I don't know. There, there's so many ways we could take this particular uh, question. Um, you know, I would certainly prefer fun just because it gives us a little bit more uh, freedom to kind of do our own designs. But yeah, glam is interesting. I think I'm with you on the fun. Kind of hoping it's fun. <laughs> you guys are okay. I kind of was secretively hoping maybe we would have glamorous. And I even, <laughs> I even picked out my um, glamorous earrings to oh, wear for all of you today because okay. it kind of reminded me of cake decorating and icing. So we're going to have to see what the polls say here as we wait for this. Um, but I'm very excited to see this. Um, also, just so you guys know, if you're watching the start of the event, I mentioned that there's going to be live giveaways throughout the four hours from our incredible sponsors. And for a chance to win any of those prizes, you're also going to leave a comment in the chat box and tell us what is your favorite part about the live decorating competition. Uh, the winner will be selected at random from all the different submissions in the various chats. So whether it's Creative Cake Design, Craftsy, Facebook, YouTube, definitely enter your um, responses in the chat and then one of our team members will will um, randomly select one of the winners and will contact you via direct message for further details on how to claim your prize okay so it looks like ladies are you ready oh no <laughs> we are going glamorous <laughs> of course. Right. exactly what we didn't want but okay <laughs> thanks guys <laughs> They were reading my mind. I love it. Uh, awesome. So with that, we're going to let them get started. I'm very excited to be ready? stepping in and I'm out ready. of camera here <laughs> so we can check in on okay, what they're doing. This. And I will continue to keep an eye out on what all of you are saying online here Graham, so that we can ready? interact ready? with Go. both okay. Ann and Rachel throughout these four hours. And if you have specific questions or other things that you would like to ask them, definitely let us know and we'll do our best to incorporate those. So with that, oh they're getting started. This will be very interesting to see what all comes about. I'm super, I'm super excited to see what's going to happen. I will be completely so honest. And tell you, <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't have a lot of experience in baking, so this is going to be quite fun for me. Well, we'll teach you along the way. No worries. I'm glad to hear that. I will tell you, I do get quite mesmerized watching these cake decorating videos and things online. Um, nice. It's kind of amazing to me how fast I can kill 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it, it well when you're watching uh, on on shows like that, they're typically things that are being filmed over the course of multiple hours, and you're just seeing little snippets. I mean, you're getting the real thing today, which is really us like trying to figure out what the heck we're gonna do um, with our cakes. Mm -hmm. So uh, very true. there's gonna be a lot more fumbling <laughs> in this particular event than there is on any of the other uh, shows that you watch on TV. Yes, so what she said. Bear with us. <laughs> Okay, Anne, yes. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do for Glamorous. <laughs> I don't think I was prepared for that to be the answer. No, I wasn't either, but that's okay. We're going to no, make Rachel, it work. with all of your decorating of wedding cakes and things, I would think you have Glamorous nailed. Uh, yeah, so Glamorous is actually one of my favorite styles just because it has a more elegant feel, and you can really go modern or vintage. You can go a lot of different directions. Um, but you know, when you're trying to design something that's cohesive, it's really helpful to have things like color scheme, <laughs> um, maybe flower choices, other types of decor that you might be incorporating into the overall a feel of the the event that we're planning for. And so, not having a specific um, uh, set of inspiration here is really yeah. challenging. The, co the color palette would be nice. I'm just yeah, saying, just a little saying. bit more information would be super helpful at this point. I don't think I realized how challenging that might be, actually. <laughs> What about you, Anne? How about some of your experience with doing glamorous cakes? I mean, I've definitely done my fair share of glamorous, again, with the wedding cakes and Sweet Sixteen cakes and all that. Um, but yes, again, I usually had some direction <laughs> <laughs> about whether it was, you know, kind of vintage glam or trendy glam. Um, so I'll be interested to see what our viewers choose for us to do. And... Uh, what Rachel does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't don't, um, don't give away too much here, Anne. I, I'm totally going to be watching what you're doing and maybe stealing some tricks from her. <laughs> uh, 
What do you think your Hungarian grandmother would say to you right now, Rachel? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, she didn't speak a whole lot of English, so she would probably be uh, throwing flour and sugar my direction and... Uh, just <laughs> probably stuffing a cookie in my mouth. Honestly. <laughs> you look weak. <laughs> yes, eat more. You'll need your stamina for the four hours. With her. <laughs> That's what grandmothers are for. Come on. That's right. So when do we find out the colors? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to know colors. When is that on our schedule? Colors. Cherry? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, that's coming up in a little bit here. Oh, okay, oh great. boy. Okay. Well, don't you just need a little food coloring though to change that up, right? Well, yeah, but it's helpful to know what that is before uh, designing a cake. Because, you know, are we going to start with a white cake or are we going to start with a colored cake or are we going to add color? Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of, okay, this is going to be pretty, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it, there's just a lot of ways you can incorporate color, whether it be the whole cake or just pieces parts of the cake. So I think that's the challenge for us right now is trying to figure out how we will make that happen, I guess. Well, why don't we just do that then? Should we just move this up? And <gasps> yes, do you know, that would be amazing. You guys are starting to sweat over that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just a little bit. Just let's little bit. put off our second polling question then, which is around color scheme. Yay. White <laughs> or pastel, definitely enter your preferences in the chat box. And again, one of our team members will, will compile all those answers and then give us that response, and we will let Rachel and Ann know Yay. what colors they're using for their cake decorating. Um, do you, again, preferences? Have you guys already started down a theme over there? I've picked a pattern. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a floral uh, pattern. So I, any color could work here. I, I'm good with with bold or pastel. I don't know about you. What yeah, you I think I'm good with both. Um, I probably would use a little bit of bold in the pastel and a little bit of pastel in the oh, bold. Oh yeah, yeah so, that's true. Yeah. I'm like we're as I'm watching you guys in your coats there. It's like we've got the bold purple and then the pastel pink. So there you go. That's true. We're ready to go. Might be a little indication as to where your heads might be. Yeah, I am definitely a jewel tone fan. Yes, I, I, I like those too. But there will be blush somewhere on my cake. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just love blush. Oh my gosh, well I'm going to be so excited to see what comes out of all of this. There's a lot of work that goes into a cake. Now I know we're making a huge tiered celebration cake, but on average, ladies, how much time does it take you to bake a cake? To bake it or to fill it in Well, stuff? all of it. Bake it, decorate it, all that stuff. I mean, I'm assuming this is like a day-long activity. Oh, at least. It depends on if there's sugar flowers or something. It could take weeks. Weeks, yeah, yeah. To, to prepare for. And some of the cakes take, you know, 40, 50 hours to decorate, depending on how much detail's on them. Oh, my gosh. I would say an average, uh, like, three-tier cake would take most people about 20-ish hours. Mm -hmm. uh, again, depends on how elaborate it is. Uh, those, those types of factors, like hand painting or making gum paste flowers, those are all going to add just lots of man hours because they're all done uh, petal by petal usually, and we're coloring each item uh, one by one. So definitely a process for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, you'll be happy to know we got the results in. Already. Yeah, the <laughs> color. So we asked bright or pastels, and the answer, ladies, is bright. Bright. Yay. Oh, right. <laughs> Let's see what they're going to do I with this. I was kind this. of secretly hoping that. <laughs> well, we got something yeah. to go our way. Yes. Just to let you guys know, when we're looking for various input from all of you, we're going to ask that you use your chat features. So again, put your comments in the chat. When we're asking for the polling, you can give us your answers. And again, as we get into some of our giveaways, we want to know what you're liking best about this live um, event today. So if you put that in the chat as well, once we give you some ideas of what the prizes are that are up for winning, um, then we will um, reach out to those winners directly and let you know how you can claim your prize. And let me just say, there are some really amazing prizes, so you should definitely stick around and be sure that you are commenting on our chat because they are really, really good prizes. Thanks to uh, 
all of our sponsors, seriously, could not have done um, as much as we're able to do for you today if it hadn't been for them. Ann, what are you thinking? I see some cool stuff happening. What are you doing? Um, I, I feel like I'm going to go a little like, like, like have a hint of Art Deco kind Ooh. of lamb. But, but with a little like, vintage? A little twist. Yeah. Okay. How about you? I think I'm going a little bit more modern. Okay. And you, don't, have... you do very well with your geometrics. <laughs> <laughs> I love geometrics, but I also love floral, so it's always a tough call for me when I get to design my own cakes. Yes, I understand. It's almost worse when you have to come up with it yourself. I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice to have lots of inspiration. So we have a question here from Natalie. Mm -hmm. um, she is asking if you all would share some tips on using fondant. Sure. Okay. Um, so fondant is uh, one of those items. So I'm actually working with modeling chocolate here. It looks like it's probably fondant because it's very similar. There's, um, there's two differences between fondant and modeling chocolate that are really important. And one is texture just in how thick it is and how pliable it is. And one is elasticity, and that's how stretchy it is, obviously. Now, when working with fondant, it's very stretchy because you want fondant to kind of mold and take shape over either a cake or whether it's a sculpted cake or just a regular tiered cake. With modeling chocolate, it sort of holds its shape up a little bit better. So there's, uh, there's two differences between um, those two products. My best recommendation though is to work with a couple of different styles of fondant to see which one is going to work better for you. And a lot of that just depends on your climate. So Anne is in New Jersey, which is a very humid climate. Uh, I'm in Denver, which is a very dry climate. So what I prefer to work with is a little different from her uh, preferences simply because of the humidity levels. Now, I prefer using um, Choco Pam, which is a brand of satin ice and one of our sponsors, FYI. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I prefer Choco Pan mostly because it, uh, it's very moist, it's made from chocolate, so it has a lot of oils in it, and it just holds up much better. It doesn't dry out nearly as fast. And do you want to share which one you use? I, I use the regular satin ice fondant mostly. I do like the Choco Pan also, uh -huh. and some of their modeling chocolate for certain things. Sure. It, it does hold up quicker and you can use gum paste but it takes longer to dry obviously right so if you need something to set up quick I, I do like the modeling chocolate um, and I'd say one of the biggest tips that I always tell any of my students is that your cake underneath needs to be really clean um, because fondant does not cover up imperfections so you want to master getting your buttercream really smooth and cold before you cover it with fondant yeah I think a lot of people especially when they're starting out they don't realize that the fondant is not the only covering on the cake itself. It, it really is iced in, fully iced in buttercream. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're getting a fondant cake, you're actually getting a buttercream cake that's covered in fondant. So don't skimp on the buttercream when you're using fondant. Make sure that you have a nice coating just like you would for any regular cake. So you don't want to do just uh, a crumb coat, for instance. You want to make sure that your cake is fully iced in buttercream before uh, putting your fondant over top of it. Because Anne said, um, and you'll see as we cover our cakes in fondant, if they're not iced well, they're, they're not going to fondant well either. Awesome. There were a couple of other questions that I want to address here. The first one was from Amy, and she wanted to know where this can be viewed today. So your streaming channels are cr our Creative Cake Design YouTube channel the Craftsy YouTube um, channel, the Creative Cake Design Facebook, and the Craftsy Facebook pages. So those are all the different areas where you can join us today. Um, and then we also had a question from, it looks like Salty Sweet Bake. 
Um, and she says, I have one fondant paddle. I don't want to buy another one since I rarely decorate cakes with fondant. What can I use instead of another paddle to make sharp edges? Interesting. So my first recommendation to you is splurge for the $5 and get yourself a second paddle because it will make your life a whole lot easier. And I know that if you're not going to use it a lot, you don't want to spend more money. I get that. Um, but that really is the best thing that you can do for yourself is just invest in some really good quality tools. Um, smoothers are not that expensive, especially if you can grab a coupon from you know, one of their local stores as well. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is um, you can use a piece of acetate. So that's a thicker piece of plastic. Uh, I don't I, think I had, do you have, have acetate some. with you? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So if you just cut a little piece of acetate, I would use this more as something to hold your cake in place and then use your smoother uh, for edges and you can butt your uh, smoother up against acetate. That works really well. Um, even a slightly thicker acetate, uh, something um, like what a cutting board, a really thin, flexible cutting board, something of that sort uh, would work really well for you as well. Awesome. And I want to take just a moment again to mention our fabulous sponsors. We're going to be giving our first giveaway here at about 1030, but we want to give all of you a chance to enter to win. It is a cake pan set from Fat Daddios, and Rachel's going to tell us a little bit more about that here in just a minute. But to enter, all you need to do is leave a comment in the chat box and tell us what is your favorite part of the live cake decorating competition. The winner will be selected at random from all the submissions in the chats on the Creative Cake Design Craftsy Facebook and YouTube channels, and the winner will be contacted via direct message for further details on how to claim your prize. All right, so Fat Daddios. This is the only brand of cake pan that I ever used. Um, I started out, gosh, 16, 16 years ago professionally. Um, I started baking as a child, but when I was buying my own equipment, uh, I was just buying whatever I could find at the local store. And then I was introduced to Fat Daddios, and I will never go back to anything else. Um, they have the best pans. They're, uh, they're insulated really well, so you get a nice even bake, and you don't, you don't have to think twice about um, your pans in the oven, whether they're going to burn on the outside or, or not be baked in the middle. They're just great pans. So the first prize up is a set. Ooh. I'll Vanna White a little bit. <laughs> Very it's nice. a set of uh, pans. There are 10 of them. It ranges from four all the way down to 12, I believe. Um, and these ones are the three inch tall pans. And uh, there are four sets of these to go around. We've got the three inch tall pans and we also have two inch tall pans. Um, this particular giveaway is for the three inch tall pans and you have to write in the comment section what you like most about uh, this live event. So hopefully it's me that you like the best. I don't <laughs> they know. really what are liking you? the interaction and you guys sharing your tips as you're going. <laughs> it's very fun. I feel like I'm not getting a whole lot done though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> She's starting to stress over there. I know, I feel like I need oh, to start fun gosh. dodging here. Okay. I have an idea of what I'm doing now, sort of, <laughs> which is always good. Yeah, well, <laughs> ideas are good. Implementing them sometimes. Yeah, we'll see really if it good. actually translates into yeah. what I want. This is, um, so uh, if you are not familiar with what I'm doing here, I'm using an impression mat uh, just to imprint my model in chocolate so that I could have a pattern that I don't have to go in and hand uh, create. So that's what's really nice about impression mats. Um, this particular mat is not necessarily created for cake, and so it's not clear. And so lining these up is a little bit trickier um, than the normal impression mat, but doable. But I have a beautiful floral pattern going on, little paisley action. And that is something that the modeling chocolate is much better for than fondant, because by the time she were to get to the end of that, she was using fondant. This part would be really dry Correct. and would crack. Yeah, you also can't really do this with 
fondant. You can do it with <laughs> modeling chocolate. If I were to pick up a piece of fondant like that, it would just stretch and start to pull and tear. Um, and I would lose a lot of the, the texture that I'm applying at this point. I'll line this one up again. All right, are you getting ready to cover? Mm -hmm. Am I in your way? Mm -hmm. No. Well, I'm not that well, ready. I better throw more stuff. <laughs> I'm not that ready. Okay. In fact, I have to clear up my own spot here. I got a little excited. This is the boring part. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> The start is never that exciting because no. there's not a, a whole lot of action going on. Well, I've got a couple more questions here around fondant sure. from mm -hmm. our sure. viewers. Um, let's see here. Catherine would like to know how long does the fondant last if you don't use it all at once? So you want to make sure that it's uh, very tightly sealed in its plastic bag and in a Tupperware or the bucket it comes in. Um, and it will last for a pretty long time open, like months. Um, there's an expiration date, but usually it just gets hard, if anything. The chocolate one can sometimes get moldy if you, there's any water introduced to it, so you want to be careful with that. But the biggest thing is once you're done covering your cake, you take the scraps and you put them in a Ziploc um, or something like that so that they don't dry out. Speaking of, I need one. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, it's really great to throw your extra excess fondant into um, just a Ziploc bag, anything that you have laying around. Um, in order to keep it from drying as you're working with it. Well, you guys have a lot of fans here. Um, many of them have said that they have taken other virtual courses from you guys, oh. and so this is super fun for them to watch you together. Um, Danielle had a question around the cake pans, actually, and she okay. wanted to know if the pans um, need cloth bands to cook more evenly. They do not. Um, that's what I love so much about Fat Daddios is you don't need anything extra. You just use the pan um, because they just have such great um, insulation and just the way that it all uh, bakes so evenly. I don't use anything extra with my Fat Daddio pans. Um, unlike some other brands, you you often do need to wrap them with either wet cloth um, or they actually have cake baking bands um, where you actually will uh, moisten those too and wrap them around. And that's just a way of adding insulation to a thin pan. So uh, again, Fat Daddios is just, for me, the go-to pan every time. Uh, I use it both personally and professionally. There's no way around. I, I will never use a different pan. <laughs> yeah, I agree, I use them also. If you have a cake that's a little temperamental, um, that, you know, like a very light, fluffy cake, you can always use the band to make sure. Um, it does, you don't get the dome sometimes, um, but it does rise pretty well in these pans. Um, here's a question from Jill. Can the modeling chocolate be colored the same way that fondant can be colored? It sure can, yep. Um, you can just use gel colors just like any other uh, fondant or gum paste, it's the same process. And Tracy wanted to know, do you expect people to eat the fondant or um, modeling chocolate or do you remove it first? So I personally love modeling chocolate. It's actually made to taste like a white chocolate and white chocolate is my favorite even over a milk or a dark chocolate. I know, nobody shoot me, I know it's not real chocolate. Um, it's not real chocolate. Real. It's not real chocolate. It does have cocoa butter in it though. Yes, it just doesn't it does. have does. the actual um, chocolate uh, portion of that. Um, mixture. But for me, I love modeling chocolate because it is white chocolate and white chocolate in flavor. Fondant, uh, it's going to depend a little bit on the brand as to whether or not I enjoy uh, actually eating fondant. But it's a personal preference. You will find that a lot of people will just munch right through it and they love it because it's just sugary and sweet. Mm -hmm. You'll find other people eat around it. Uh, I don't ever recommend pulling fondant off before cutting your cake though, which I've heard a lot of people do that. I don't know. They do, they do it a lot of times like in catering halls. Right. They just rip it apart and massacre the poor cake. Right. Um, but you're, a lot of people pull it off before they eat it. Um, 
My children love it. Kids tend to like it because it's very sweet. <laughs> yeah. I roll mine very thin, like an eighth of, eighth of an inch. So it's not, and you're getting all that buttercream underneath. So I don't notice that it's like terrible. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, think if it's applied to a cake properly, yes. everybody would it's eat it good. and enjoy yes. it. Exactly. Because it is, you're right, it's yes. rolled so thin. Yes. Um, and you should have a full layer of buttercream underneath it. And I think a lot of people skimp on the buttercream and go way yes. too thick with the rolling of fondant. And then you get a really like poor ratio of fondant to buttercream to cake. Yes. And it doesn't melt in your mouth kind of the same way, so. Great tips. Well, I have our first winner for our first giveaway of the Daddy-O cake pans. Ooh. Okay. And the winner that was selected randomly is Michelle Willis. Congratulations, Congratulations Michelle. Congratulations, Michelle. And our team is going to reach out to you with direct private message here um, to make arrangements for getting you those pans. So thank you. Congratulations. You're starting with your bottom tier. I think I'm starting yes. with a middle tier. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's all good. You know, I think that we may have inadvertently missed one of our sponsors earlier when we were mentioning them as well. So we want to make sure we bring up Satin Ice because they are also oh, yes. participating <laughs> and giving away some amazing prizes today. I know they're called giveaways, but I always use the word prize. That's probably not the right word. Satin Ice is the one who has provided us with all of our modeling chocolate, fondant, gum paste, buttercream. Uh, they kind of do it all when it comes to covering cakes. So uh, yes, Satin Ice has been a huge sponsor for us. Um, I don't think they specifically have a, um, a giveaway item. That's because they're allowing us to use <laughs> all of their items, which yes. is great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but they, uh, one of the great things is um, they've, uh, they've paired up with Bake Deco. Um, and Bake Deco actually has a 15% off coupon in our coupon book for all Satin Ice products and all Fat Daddy-O products on their website. So that is a way to get your hands on the amazing Satin Ice products. I love all of the uh, um, chats that are going on here. Everybody's congratulating Michelle. So that's fantastic. I love seeing the community out here. Um, we did have one more question from Irene. Um, what about using homemade marshmallow fondant? Is that a good idea? Do you ever make your own fondant? <laughs> I, I mean, can, God bless you if you want to do it. Right? <laughs> um, so I will say this. Marshmallow fondant is fabulous. You can absolutely make your own fondant. There's nothing wrong with that if you have the time. I will say that in my peak season of making wedding cakes in my studio with a couple of employees, we we're making 175 wedding cakes plus numerous birthday cakes, celebration cakes, uh, you name it, cupcakes, yeah. all that good stuff. I frankly did not have time to make my own fondant at that point. No. So I have never made marshmallow fondant, I'll be honest with you. And it's not because I don't want to, it's just because there are so many great products out there. I didn't see any reason to make my own and reinvent the wheel when uh, I already had a great product to work with. But you know, if you have time or you really enjoy the flavor of a marshmallow fondant, I say go for it. Have fun, enjoy it. Um, I, I can't give you any personal experience on using it because I've never used it or made it myself. Yeah, I agree with everything she said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, if, you're, if we're just making like a tiny little four or six inch cake, I mean, by all means, make it. But when you're going through hundreds of pounds of fondant, first of all, your hands will break off and your mixer will die. Yeah. So um, I leave it to Satin Ice to do with their giant mixers. <laughs> Well, I bet you guys would like to learn a little bit more about what you're doing today as well. So should we throw the third polling question out? <laughs> yes, please. That would be nice. Can we just throw them all out? Yes. <laughs> um, so our third polling question today is around decor. We want to know if our viewers would like to see them take more of a ge geometric or an organic twist to their decorating. Organic. So go ahead and throw <laughs> Throw your uh, recommendations in the chat and we will compile those and then announce. I have to ask you guys again, it sounded like Anne was all for organic. <laughs> Clearly. I'm, I'm all for geometric. <laughs> okay, we have a little difference of opinion. <laughs> See, we need a good team. Go purple! <laughs> Sorry. Um, and what does that mean? Speak to me a little bit more around organic or geometric. Yeah, so geometric is typically going to be something with shapes. It's going to have lots of uh, style and structure structure to it. I uh, think any geometric shape you can think of and then replicate that pattern multiple times. So whether it's round or square or hexagons, diamonds, um, it's just a way for you to be able to um, really put a pattern to your design. 
Organic really just means more free-flowing, something that doesn't have structure and, um, you know, it, maybe it's asymmetric. Maybe it's just... I'm all about asymmetric. Hod hodgepodge. <laughs> I'm a little bit, I, well, I, we know. I, I think we're both a little type A, but yes. um, you kind of, anybody in this field is really a little bit more type A. However, I, I really love when I have a plan and a structure and just something to build from. I, it helps me, the geometric shapes really help me anchor my designs. Whereas something that's a little bit more free flowing and organic, um, I don't know, it doesn't feel quite as smooth and rhythmic to me. And I think we already know the answer to this watching you guys, but people were asking if you're working with real cakes or styrofoam oh, molds. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're real. These are real. <laughs> <laughs> and we will cut into them. Um, absolutely. I know you saw me just flip this cake over. This is the board. I promise there's cake inside there. Um, when I panel my cakes with modeling chocolate, so I'm doing a different technique than what Anne is. I'm paneling, which means that... I put a piece of modeling chocolate on the top, and now I'm gonna wrap this other piece of modeling chocolate around it. And so, and the reason for that is because when I have such a, a deep texture like this, if I were to wrap it in a very traditional fondant covering method, I would lose a lot of the texture that I've put all that work into. So I don't wanna do that. So that's why I'm paneling versus just uh, a straight up cake. I was oh, going to say, covering? I didn't sign up for this if there's not real cake involved. Oh, there's no cake. <laughs> oh, it's real. <laughs> there's plenty of cake. I'm hoping to sample some later. <laughs> <laughs> I spent lots of time uh, filling and icing these last night. and she I did. I was sleeping. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I sent her to bed so she, at least one of us could have some sleep and rest. I did offer to help. She did offer. In my defense. Well, I, I didn't even have an offset spatula yeah. with me, so uh, it wasn't going to be super helpful to have two of us Impressive. fumbling. Impressive, she did that with a, with a butter knife. So <laughs> butter that, knife? That's talent. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, sometimes you just got to make do with whatever you have. Well, as we're making do, I do have the answer. For Ooh, <laughs> and I think Anne's going to be very happy. <laughs> Sorry, our organic Sorry, goddess. Rachel. Damn it. Okay. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we I know it's live one. when things like that happen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Well, and let me take a minute just to talk about our second giveaway, too, because now is the time for you to enter for that. Um, so, this is the Semi Cakes Iso Malt Basics Kit. So um, when Rachel has a minute, she can talk to you a little bit about that as well. But I just want to reiterate that to enter for your chance to win one of the prizes, you need to leave a comment in the chat box around what you're enjoying most about this live cake decorating competition. And then our winner will be selected at random from all the submissions in the chats. Fabulous. So I will announce them at 1130, that winner. That's exciting. Uh, you guys will definitely love the kit that uh, Sydney over at Semi Cakes donated for our giveaway. Um, if you're not familiar with isomalt, isomalt is a, uh, a processed sugar, basically, that um, holds up a little bit better than just a standard granulated sugar. And so it's what we use oftentimes in the cake industry and just the sugar world in general to create anything that is going to be clear. So it's literally made it's made from sugar. It's these itty bitty little um, discs and they melt down uh, right into a container just in the microwave. And these are already like ready to use tiles. So you don't have to do any of the traditional prep that um, you normally would if you're just getting the granulated isomalt, yeah. which you actually have to cook down with water for several minutes. Um, but in this case, these are already ready to go. So you literally just put them in the microwave for 30 seconds. You give it a little swirl, maybe another 15 to 30 seconds, depending upon how much is in your uh, bowl. I'm actually going to use these later. Are you using them? I, I, I might use it too. Okay. That makes it much easier. It does. I used to sit over that giant pot. Nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, somebody else gets to sit yes. over the big pot Thank you. instead of us, <laughs> um, which makes our lives, again, faster and easier. You know, oftentimes, so many of us are doing this as a business rather than just a hobby. And so time is of the essence. So anything that we can do to save time and, of course, save a little money as well uh, is certainly what we're going to try to do. But 
Uh, Semi Isomalt is fabulous. I love it. It's one of my favorite products out there for uh, any type of sugar decor. Awesome. And Anne, I'm getting questions around what you're dipping your fingers in and why you're doing oh, that. This is shortening, <laughs> uh, like Frisco, and it helps prevent the fondant from sticking. Um, if you put too much, though, it can break it apart, so you don't want to put too much. But I usually kind of rub it on my hands or on the surface of the table. In the winter, I tend to use a little more of it. And in the summer, I tend to use a little more of the powdered sugar or cornstarch because it's so humid out. Um, I'm just mixing colors right now to see what color I'm going to make because I'm not really 100% sure. <laughs> so the nice thing about these fondants are that they're all very concentrated colored. And that's one thing, if you're doing marshmallow coloring at home, marshmallow fondant at home, and you want like a really saturated color, you are gonna use a lot of gel color. Um, like black, red, it's, it's a lot. Um, I always get questions, how do I make it red? Well, it's red gel color and lots of it. So the nice thing is you can kind of mix and make new colors with the already pre-made colors. I think I'm using all the bags, sorry. Go for it, there's okay. plenty more. And how did you guys apply the molding chocolate without smoothing out the texture? Oh, uh, so if you didn't, if you missed it, all I did was ever so gently wrap it, and I just used the the side of my hand just to smooth it out. You don't you don't have to push. Um, I think that's one of the bigger mistakes that people make when either applying modeling chocolate or fondant to their cakes. They feel like they have to really push, and you're just trying to glide over the surface ever so slightly. Think of trying to just um, you know gently massage your palms together ever so slightly you don't want to indent anything you just want to ever so slightly be pushing a little pressure to adhere it not to smash it in there so that's how that lovely texture stays put it's also how you prevent um, any indentations and dents like um, disfiguration within your fondant especially on corners of your cakes yeah, light touch. Almost everything we do in cake decorating is very light touch. All right, how many cakes do you have covered? One? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> don't I'm worry. not too far behind. I don't even it. know what I'm doing here. Uh <laughs> um, I'm just playing mixologist over here, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Not 100% sure <laughs> what direction I'm going in. <laughs> I still don't know yet either. Uh, but at least we know bright colors. I bright might colors. Some, I don't know. And when I think organic. of glamorous, I I think either like all black or all white. I know it's, it's a that's problem. a tricky one for me. And how did you hide the seam? <laughs> 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 While I have it out here. So it's a little, um, you can definitely see that there is a line here, but all I'm doing is using my finger and just sort of doing a circular motion to rub it together. The other thing that I did is I cut both, so I overlapped both pieces of modeling chocolate first, and then I cut a seam vertically so that I could get rid of if you think about that seam being right uh, where my finger is attached to my the rest of my hand, um, I cut evenly through both of those. So I basically sliced the fingers apart and then I just moved them back together. And so it's a nice easy way to just get that seam to blend. But this is also going to be the back of my cake. So you're, you know, you're not going to notice that. The other thing that you could do is make this um, if you have like a plaque or you know you're going to have a cascade of flowers, you can cover those seams with other decor. So, yes, there's always a back of a there's cake. There's always a back <laughs> to your cake. Yes. I love Connie's comment on here. I, I'm with Connie. She says, I'm so impressed with how well you can talk and create at the same time. <laughs> Connie says, I would be a total spaz if I tried to talk <laughs> about designing. We're spazzes on the inside yeah. right now. <laughs> I, think, I think it's coming out of us, too. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's just like anything else you do over and over, right? right. You get used to it, that's for sure. They definitely are enjoying all the tips, though, and they said they're learning a ton watching you guys work in the moment here. Oh, good. Oh, decisions, decisions. I know. <laughs> So sometimes it's hard to achieve the color you want um, because food coloring is not the same as regular pigment that you would use like to paint. So for instance, like the black fondant has a lot of 
purple and green undertones to it. So you sometimes have to kind of counteract those with, Steve. yeah. Like if you want to make a gray, you need to add some yellow um, to the black in order for it to not look like lavender. So that takes a little bit of practice. On the Saturday's website, I know they do have a color um, guide that you can pick like the different colors to get whatever color you want. And it kind of shows you how to do it. How much black are you planning on using? All of the black, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a lot. Okay, so I can use most of this and you won't be mad at me? No. Okay. I we have a little. little packet. If okay. you need that, yeah. you can have the little one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I just want one more nugget. It's <laughs> easy. <laughs> I'm not going to use it all. Okay. All right. Did you pick colors, Anne? Well, I'm kind of going with, I think, like kind of like a peacocky, tealish kind of color. Okay. And um, then I'm going to do some gold. Okay. White. And I'm thinking of splashing in there some like burgundy, like bright Ooh. burgundy. Like a bright, not like dark. I think I a bright burgundy. A bright burgundy. <laughs> and then of course a little Well, blush. they did ask for bright colors, so you're on the right And track. then maybe a little bit of like aqua. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. How about you? Right now I'm sticking with black and white. Okay. Yeah. I haven't decided what my accent color is quite yet. Okay. Um, if, if, uh, if all goes well, it would be purple. Okay. You do love purple. <laughs> So one of the things that you need to do with fondant, when it first comes out of the bucket, it's a little firmer. You really just need to, uh, they, call, they say it's called conditioning, so conditioning your fondant, which really just means kneading it a few times to make it a softer texture. So you can see now that this one is really soft and smooth, I can imprint it better, where this one is just, it's much firmer, it takes a lot more pressure to get through. So if you're struggling with your fondant when you're rolling it out, just be sure that you're conditioning it properly. You certainly can overwork it as well. So you want to just bring it right to that point where it's nice and soft and pliable, but not getting so soft that it becomes gooey and stretches and rips and tears. And what are you rolling all that with? Powdered sugar, cornstarch? So it's going to depend a little bit on the uh, location that you're in. If you're in a super humid environment, you want to be able to use a little bit of cornstarch because that's going to absorb the moisture a little bit better. If you are in, well, we're in Minnesota right now, and it's winter time, so it's on the drier side here. Um, we could use powdered sugar very easily and not have any issues with humidity. When I'm in Colorado, I only use powdered sugar. Uh, it's very rare that I will actually use any type of cornstarch unless I'm working with gum paste. Uh, and gum paste is a product that just dries really hard. It's what we make our flowers out of usually. And so uh, it adds to the drying process. It helps uh, just move that process along a little bit better. And it looks like you guys are really needing that. How hard is that to need? And like, you guys both have a second career has masseuses. That <laughs> doesn't work out. You get some good guns, I gotta tell you. Um, it's not so much that it's hard. It's that I'm mixing colors. You have to really mix it well to get uniform. Or you'll get like a little striation, which is fine if that's what you're looking for. Um, but it's really just putting your body weight into it for me. Uh, that does help. Mm -hmm. But if you don't need it, when you need it, it sort of activates the elastin that's in there, so it makes it stretchy. So if you take the fondant right out of the bucket, it's hard, you know, it'll, it's brittle, it'll even fall off in little pieces sometimes. So you have to warm it up in order to get it to do what you want. And I rarely use cornstarch either, um, unless it's extremely humid. Sometimes I'll make like a cornstarch mixture, I'll add a little more cornstarch to the powdered sugar. But I find that it's a little too drying. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you're working with like black and you do put powdered sugar down and you get it all over, I, I get that question a lot. And yeah, working with deeper colors, even blues, reds, deep purples, um, anything that's a real dark or bright color, uh, you can see just a little bit of powdered sugar just from my rolling pin is kind of getting uh, stuck into the fondant itself. And there are some tricks to get that back out, but if you overdo it, it gets really hard to get rid of all of those marks. So uh, I'm not using any powdered sugar. You'll notice I'm just working on this silicone mat. Uh, this is actually a great mat. Um, I love using it because the fondant doesn't stick to it. You can see it comes right up, but it still rolls really nicely. 
So what are you pulling out over there, Anne? Do I need to come eat that stuff? Because it looks like it's going to be wasted. What are you picking out? <laughs> oh, these little pieces? Yes. Can I come so, over? You don't want to eat this. So you some, don't want to eat it? Somebody every some, was saying this was so good. Every so, no, it is, but this is not this part. Okay. Eat, eat some of this. <laughs> eat some I of this. just want, because everyone says, How, what does it taste like? Would it you recommend marshmallow. It? Yeah. Um, I like, like sweet. Sweet you marshmallow. You want to eat all of it. Take a little bite. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of pow hard powdered sugar in the fondant, and that's what I was pulling out um, at the top sometimes. It's actually pretty chewy. It, it is, is chewy. It's yes. kind of like chewing gum. So when it dries, you'll see like later on some of the pieces we make ahead of time, it gets, it gets hard, almost like a, like a wafer. So people who like icing mm -hmm. or frosting, they would love this. Would love this. Yeah. Cause I could see, I, yeah. I'm a sugar person myself. So yeah, and I'm I, not one to pick the sugar off the top I'm of the not. cake. I right. like to eat <laughs> Have you, <laughs> have you had, um, I might be dating myself, circus peanuts, the candy, like it's like a marshmallow and it's orange and it looks mm. like a circus peanut. Uh -uh. Um, that's what I try to describe fondant as because it has that like marshmallowy texture, just like a circus peanut, but it, and it, but it's super sweet and, um, you know, it's tasty. It sort of melts in your mouth. Yeah, very good. It's so, so fun, I, it's like an art project over here. Yes! <laughs> I just had a, a change of heart. Um, I didn't like that color, so I'm just tossing it. That, <laughs> blue, is, that blue is so pretty. Yeah, I'm going to use it as an accent, but I don't want the whole tear that color. So a lot of people were asking, like, if you make a mistake, how do you save it? So um, I put it back there, okay. and you can always use it on another cake. I'm going to use it for some decorations on the cake. Um, but how long will it stay good in a plastic bag? A long time. Bag? Okay. Yeah. As long as you keep it sealed really well, you'll be good. All right, I'm going back to my little hole. Okay. <laughs> you can take, come visit can I us take anytime. This with me? Yes, you can. <laughs> I'm having a, a moment of. Uh oh. Are you reconsidering your choices? A little bit. Okay. It, it just isn't. It's not appearing in my head the way it is in front of me. Uh oh. It's all right. It'll be all right. I'll make it work. Right. Um, can it can you can the fondant be saved if it's over conditioned? Yes, just set it aside. Let it um, let the uh, let the fondant just come back to room temperature. Sorry, sorry, I'm gonna set that back here for yeah. you and rest it. Yeah, yeah, and just let it rest. It it probably I mean, you know depending upon how overworked it is. Usually, what's happening is you're overworking it. Um, just by the heat of your hands. And so it's uh, melting some of those sugars and the other products that are within the fondant. And so you just need to let them come back to room temperature again, and you can use it. No, don't throw it away. No. You can always and you can always use it for like little decorations. Maybe it's not suitable to cover a cake with. Yeah. But you can always panel, um, you can panel using fondant. Um, I usually will roll out a long piece and uh, put it on a, like a pizza board or something and throw it in the fridge for a few seconds or the freezer and let it get really hard and then it doesn't stretch as much. And we can't really see what you're doing right now oh. with where the cake is positioned so maybe you could, there you go. People were saying they couldn't see you. Sorry, rolling. I'm just changing my color trace because I'm having a little a moment. <laughs> so usually we don't just do this on the fly, usually. Yeah, well, usually we, we know what we draw a picture. we're going to be using. We, I come up with a pal color palette so I'm a little... Uh, so one of you is using a wooden rolling pin and the other one is, what is that, PVC pipe? This is PVC pipe? pipe that you can get at Home Depot. <laughs> and it's cheap and it's durable and it never chips. So there you go. And it makes covering the cakes easier um, for me because... Can you travel with that? Yes, I put it in my suitcase. <laughs> I didn't even get pulled over by TSA or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Although fondant is a different one and I will tell you a funny story. You, you know the story, right? I okay. think I do. <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. My husband, Jesse. <laughs> uh, one of the Food Network challenges we did, it was out in Denver, and my fondant did not arrive at the hotel like it was supposed to. Um, so I asked my husband to go to my shop and get some fondant and bring it because he was coming out like the next day. So he went, and I'm not sure what the thought process was, but he, he thought it was a good idea to take the blue bags, big 20-pound buckets, oh, no. out, of the bu out of the bucket <clears throat> and tie it with a black X of... Uh, duct tape <laughs> and then put it in a black duffel bag okay and then try to check it so what's in fondant is glycerin you know what else that's in plastic explosives so <laughs> the plastic explosives detector went off and they were paging and paging and paging him and he had his earphones on 
and he like literally was like removed from the airport and oh brought into gosh. a room and they confiscated it and I'm screaming at him just eat it <laughs> <laughs> so they confiscated like three hundred dollars worth of fund it <gasps> oh, oh my so gosh it does actually it is an issue I know um fund and getting across border sometimes because of these reasons right the customs it sometimes gets held up so we actually had a question about whether they contain glycerin and then um, yes. somebody asked about vegetarian options. I believe this is all veg vegetarian, isn't it? Yeah, because it's... I think it is. I'm, I'm sure going to look real quick for you yeah. just to be sure. It's not uh, gelatin. It it's doesn't co It's kosher, say. so I, can, I don't think there's animal products. Yeah. It's oh, there it is. Gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free, and vegan. There you Perfect. go. Perfect. So, covers all the major allergies. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm I'm not doing so great right here. Now, uh -oh. now you're very ahead of me. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm talking too much. Things, no change, more things change very quickly. <laughs> no more stories. Cake, especially in cake competitions, I things know. change very quickly. That is true. I did make Jesse a, a Mr. Potato Head cake that year for his birthday with a detonator <laughs> on a fondant bucket. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and if you know my husband, he's like the most unassuming. You would never think he was someone that would carry explosives, <laughs> <laughs> which is what makes it even more funny. So for the person who asked about one smoother versus two smoothers, uh, you've probably noticed I haven't actually picked up my second smoother at all. Um, there are most certainly moments when I don't use two smoothers at a time. Uh, I'm also not going for that perfect square look at the very top. Because we're going for a more organic over geometric shape, uh, I am going to round my corners just a little bit with the fondant. And so one of the main differences that you typically see with a fondant cake versus a buttercream cake is fondant cakes have that nice rounded edge. Buttercream cakes tend to have a really squared off edge just from how you remove the icing with your spatula. Um, you can certainly achieve a squared off edge on a fondant cake or especially on a paneled cake uh, like I did earlier. But um, yeah, either way works. It's really a personal preference. But I haven't grabbed a second smoother. So you can do it. Yes. You don't have to have two. <laughs> you can do it. So we have another question and I'm wondering, Anne, especially with um, you in marvelous molds here if yes. maybe you might have an answer for this but somebody looks like they're trying to do elephant skin with fondant they're trying to do it yeah oh, trying to get rid of it. You, you might be talking about the elephant skin that has happened on part of my cake oh sorry is See, that what the is question where, is this is where the yeah. um non-pro over here yeah yes. so let me she show said you. So, need a tip for elephant skin yes. for fondant yeah it's okay. I thought maybe somebody was we decorating. We got you. We got you. I thought maybe somebody was decorating and wanted to make it look like it was. I mean, an that'd elephant. be cool too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want it to look like elephant skin, it's very easy to do with fondant. <laughs> yes. uh, so the reason that um, that that came up is because so on this side, I actually <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, on this side, my, I didn't have to stretch my fondant quite as much to make it over the edge and then down my board as well. Uh, over here, though, what you'll see <clears throat> is what they call elephant skin. And that just simply means that the product uh, was overstretched and overworked. And that's because I, you can see right here, I don't have uh, a whole lot of... Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Here. Let me move this so people can see. Um, I don't have a whole lot of excess fondant down here. And so I was really stretching and pulling and trying to get more fondant to come. And that creates a little bit of uh, cracking. And what, they, what people reference that as is elephant skin. But there's a quick, easy fix for it. So. I'm learning so much. Yes, see? Um, <laughs> you just take a little bit of shortening. Doesn't take a whole lot. I, I like to put a little excess in my palm and then I just uh, just make sure that it's on your fingertips. 
And all you have to do is rub it into any of the cracks that have formed. And you may say, oh my gosh, it's looking like really shiny. And you're right, with a little bit of shortening, it is gonna look a little bit shiny, but give it a little bit of time and it will dull away. On a lighter cake, like a white cake, if it's too shiny, you can just go in uh, with a little bit of cornstarch on a pouch and it takes the shine away really quickly. Powdered sugar or cornstarch works there. And would you use a similar technique to fix holes and things as well? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my main go-to whenever I have elephant skin or any type of hole is to use shortening just because it's a product that we have in our pantry and readily available. The, uh, if it's a really big hole, you may end up having to make a product called gunge. And that is simply taking a little excess fondant and a little bit of shortening together kneading it either with your fingers or on a mat and this at this point you want it to be gooey like um toothpaste consistency let me see what i have going here we'll find a spot to be able to fix and it looks like maybe a few folks lost their video feed so will you guys just give us a quick update kind of on where you're at because some said that they they just realized you put black over your texture layer there. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, and somebody else said that they didn't understand um, if it's black fondant or chocolate modeling. So this is black fondant. And this is over just a, a buttercream cake. I put my textured cake away. And then um, we are, so this is my bottom tier with black. And at the process that I'm doing right now is called um, mending. And I'm just using what we call gunge. And gunge is simply a little bit of shortening and a little bit of the color of fondant that you're using mixed together until it forms a paste similar to a toothpaste. Not super runny, but also not fully pliable. And you just mix that together and then you just take a flat Either a spatula will work or whatever fondant tool you might have. And you literally just rub it in wherever you need it. Always working one direction. So I know it's probably a little hard for you to see in that bottom edge, but that's where I had a big hole. So I've got a little bit up in here too. And so when you put the gunge on and you smooth it over, all those cracks just disappear. I hope you can see that on camera. Sometimes those tiny little details don't show up on camera, but I hope that you can see that. I can see it and it works. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. You're so welcome. I'm here for you. <laughs> so we have one question from Jackie, and I like this one because this will be good for me too. What is one tip you would give to someone who is brand new to baking and hasn't had a lot of good experiences making cakes in the past? Ooh. That is a good question. I say, first of all, uh, get a good recipe. Get a, a classic cake recipe that is not too soft, um, not too, you don't want the pound cake necessarily, but you don't want anything that's too spongy because it's a lot easier to ice, I think, when it's a little firmer. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yes. Um, and. Practice first getting that down and getting your buttercream made. Uh, and you know, take steps because I think people think that they can just do it all at once and it's and then they fail and then they give up. So, you know, and you make a goal of just baking a really good cake and squaring it off really well. And then when, once you get that set, then move on to trying the fondant. And fondant is not easy at first. Everyone is terrible at it. <laughs> like literally, I taught so many people how to do it and they tear it, it, it they stick to it, it's not, you know, it just, it's not easy to work with at first, but it actually is. It's just you need to get used to it. Yeah. And one of the other things I will say is, um, and, and this is from experience as uh, someone who started on the East Coast with baking. I grew up in Ohio and then moved to Connecticut. And Connecticut is where I really uh, started baking cakes. 
Um, and then after six years of baking cakes and mastering all my recipes, I moved to Denver, which is at elevation, which means I had to rework all of my recipes. And what I can say to you is don't be afraid to bake and bake and rebake and rebake and try it again and change a little something. Uh, oftentimes it takes a few tries to get it right. And sometimes it's an ingredient issue. Sometimes it's a mixing issue. Sometimes it's just adjusting for altitude or mm -hmm. humidity, those types of things. Uh, but don't give up. Just because you bake a cake once or twice uh, doesn't mean you've mastered making cakes. It really does take several tries at doing something. Uh, like anything in our life, it takes several tries to be able to get it right. Uh, I'd also say sort of what you were saying before about the pans. You need good tools. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, she iced it with a butter knife. It can be done. <laughs> but make it easy on yourself, you know? Get some good tools. If you're using baking pans that burn the cake, get rid of them. It's just not going to work. So... I I don't know that I shared that story fully. I mean, well, I know I sort of should. mentioned it, but I feel like you, um, you guys, I, so we are never working under the most ideal situations when we're doing things like this. Um, competitions, especially that are filmed live, uh, we're, we're not, um, we're not fully prepped. We we fly in, maybe our cakes are baked, we still have to ice them, fill them, whatever the case may be. And that was the case last night. I was filling cakes and I had come to the studio to get spatulas and mixers and everything that I thought I needed. And I got back to the hotel and I realized at nine o'clock at night, cause I'm a procrastinator, and, <laughs> uh, I work best under pressure. I realized I did not have my beloved offset spatula. I think this is going to become something that just stays in my pocket at all times <laughs> now. Um, but I did not have a spatula. So I was literally icing all six of these cakes for us to use today and laughing. The guilt is setting in. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Catholic guilt is got me. Guilty, Anne. Um, I literally uh, had no idea what I was going to do. I had a straight edge, which is what I would normally use to ice my cake. But I always put it on with my offset spatula. My icing goes on the cake. I, I get it all in the right places. And then I come back and I smooth it out. I am in an extended stay with a kitchenette with forks, knives, spoons, and butter knives. So I went with it. I used a butter knife. I got all my icing on there. I used um, my straight edge for the sides. And then the butter knife just kind of wasn't doing it anymore. So I switched to this big, long chef's knife to clear my top. So, you know, you can work with equipment that isn't intentionally made for what we do. But it really is so much easier just to have the right tools made for the process that you're doing. Good yeah. point, which is why we're giving away some of those amazing yes. things today. Yes. Have you ever had the experience of like going to a party and like the mom, it's like a friend of yours and she's like, oh my God, I screwed it up, come help me. <laughs> and then you see this cake and she gives you like, like a butter knife and you're like, uh, <laughs> do you have any sprinkles? <laughs> right? I have a quick question from Yvonne. She wants to know how thin or thin or thick you put the buttercream on before the fondant. So um, you can see, I'll, I'll turn this just a little. Hopefully I won't ruin your icing. Um, you want a fairly good coat. So on the top, I easily can go with a quarter inch of buttercream just on the top edge. And then that outer side really depends on how much room you have between your board and the cake itself. So there's always a cake board at the bottom. Um, and then I would say there's anywhere from um, maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of buttercream on the outer edge as well. I use my baseboard as my guide with my straight edge like this in order to be able to smooth it. And so it really depends on how much room is in between the cake and the board. And oftentimes you can cut that off and uh, continue to um, make space for buttercream. It just depends on if your cake shrink or you know, oftentimes many of my flavors kind of do different things, so they don't always shrink, um, but uh, it, it's gonna vary a little bit. I can say this, we actually have a couple of classes on creative cake design where you can learn exactly how much buttercream to put on and how to put it on and how to smooth it and how to get these nice crisp corners on the top of your buttercream cake. So um, we actually have 
several free videos for you over at Creative Cake Design to be able to learn lots of information about cake. Um, and of course, some of our more advanced lessons, uh, there is a fee for uh, some of the classes. There's a monthly membership um, that you can subscribe to. And when I say it's like crazy cheap, I'm talking <laughs> literally like we have a discount running right now I'm pretty sure it's five dollars for the whole year wow. so um, that's like a steal because most of the time for cake websites you're spending uh, at least uh, anywhere from ten to twenty dollars a month usually to be a part of a website like this so I do encourage you to pop over and check out our website and get that deal because it's not gonna last long all right and yes where you at I'm doing my last one here okay <laughs> Woo! I think I need to do one more cake as well. So what color did you pick? You have pink and you have, what was the other one, teal? It's like a teal. Ooh, pretty. Okay, back in the fridge this one goes. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to make an announcement once more here that we're going to be um, sharing the winner of the second giveaway, the Semi Cakes Beginner Isomalt Set, in about 10 minutes. Ooh. So if you haven't already entered by leaving a comment in the chat letting us know what your favorite part of the live competition is, please do so now. We want to make sure you're all included before we pick randomly pick our winner. Okay. Also, make sure that you check out the Creative Cake Design in the our pilot. free videos. <laughs> Got me. Can we get a time check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about oh, 11, 12. Oh, 11, 12. Oh, oh boy. Right. You guys are doing, you've done a lot in a little over an hour. Have we? <laughs> okay. If I wasn't talking so much, I'd have a whole lot more <laughs> done, I think. Done. Or if I knew what the heck we were supposed to be making, I could be a whole lot further too. <laughs> I know, part of me is just going slow because I don't want to get to the point where I actually have to do something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I will say also is you'll kind of see me washing things. Um, if you are going to color cake in white and black, you want to do your white first, obviously, because the colored fondant will stain. And sometimes even on your fingers, it will come off on the white. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, that's a great point. And you'll notice uh, we both did our white tears first, and then I moved to black. She moved to um, her darker colors. So I should have done the pink first, but... Probably, I but... <laughs> I, I, I think you changed your mind I did. in the middle that of things. That was the problem. Too. And if you're making specific colors for an event, maybe you're matching an invitation or something, whatever you've left over, you keep it, and then you can use it on another cake. Just make sure you wrap it really well. So fondant really needs to be covered. It, uh, it dries out very fast, as you guys saw, sort of just the process of me rolling this out and covering the cake. Um, my elephant skin was really more because I was stretching it just way too far rather than it drying out. But that process can happen. Um, the elephant skin definitely happens if you, uh, if you let it sit out too long too. So be careful with that. See how much less I'm working with my PVC pipe and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> It's because I'm not using powdered sugar because oh. I don't want to get it all over my block. I'm just lazy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. All right, I'm just a little, so it will actually move under there. The bottom is fine, just not on the top. And one thing uh, that was mentioned earlier, we definitely get a workout uh, rolling fondant. It is, it does take a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, stamina <laughs> in order to, to keep rolling and get this where you need it to be. Um, if you struggle with any of that, you can always cover one tier, go make some decorations, do something else, then come back and cover another tier. Mm -hmm. And there's always ways to kind of space that out so that you're not overdoing it and overworking yourself. Yes. 
You kind of like pre-knead all your colors ahead of time and then take a break. Yeah, oh yeah, that too. Well, it's always nice if you're gonna color your fondant, especially deeper colors, it's always really nice to color that the night before if you can, just so yes. it has a chance to set back and kind of come back to room temp and uh, be conditioned properly. And the color kind of changes sometimes, doesn't it? You know, it does, it's... yeah. Certain colors um, can subtle. start to fade with time and Oh yeah, so you definitely want to keep the, the fun out of direct light. Um, we've had times in the summer where we were decorating a, like a pink cake and in, the sunshine was coming in so strong and through the window that by the end of the day, half the cake had faded. Um, and we actually had to refund out the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely want to be careful with that. And there's certain colors that are more <clears throat> prone to that, like blues and purples. Yeah, blues, purples. That's, um, that's when I go to a fix, rather than redoing it, mm -hmm. I just do a light color of airbrush over it if there isn't a whole lot of decor that's gonna get covered. Okay, last cake, and Okay, will the boy. fondant covering, um, will it be hard by the time one serves the cake? So I generally keep my cakes in the fridge, so it's not, it does not get hard. Um, if you were to let them dry out in the air, they will get harder, not hard. It's so easy to cut through, but not as chewy as you just had it. I mean, I know in Europe they cover the cakes with marzipan and then we'll cover it with fondant and they leave it out. Um, fondant is a preservative, so you can actually keep a fondant to cake out at room temperature for quite a while without it going bad. Well, you guys both seem to be getting pretty far along in your process, so maybe we should make this a little more interesting. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm thinking we should ask the viewers to poll on whether you guys should keep your cakes or swap. No! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> so Please let's no. put our really? answers no. in the no, chat. No, 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 no. You're working with very different color palettes. Yeah. Be kind, guys. Really? Please. <laughs> So what do you guys want to see? Should they swap cakes or keep God decorating their own? Go ahead and put your answers in the chat. We will tally all those re responses and they will let us know what yeah, you guys would like to see. Clearly we did not know this because we did not coordinate our color palettes. No. So <laughs> not at all. Oh boy. Like all the tears or just a single tier? Yeah, I feel like all the what? tears are a little oh, aggressive, no. guys. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, so you guys made me so nervous, I just screwed up. Me too. Oh my gosh. To be <laughs> I'm all on my cake now. See, it's okay if you if you screw up, you just need to take your fondant back off, re-knead it, and, and it you can again. roll it out again. You guys got me so nervous, I pushed way too hard. That's what I so do we hard. want to ask them about whether it's all the tears or just oh. one? <sighs> God. Or do we want to leave that up to you guys? Yes, that's no, a good idea. No, we should ah. not leave that up to us. Because <laughs> if they say yes, we, just, we can just give each other one tier. <laughs> that's true, good <laughs> Oh, man. I don't want to switch any of them. Yeah, but it could be fixed. Like, you could easily panel this with black, for instance. That's You'll true. be happy to know some people really wanted to see your, like, visions come to life. Yes, oh. thank you. We'll see okay, what the, so we'll see what the we don't final swap. answer maybe we don't is here, but some are really feeling for you guys. They're like, they're working so hard on this. Yeah, that would oh be my gosh. so mean, guys. Come on. How do you get the coloring off your hands? Natalie wants to know, and I'm watching you too, like, are your fingers stained um, for weeks after this? Sometimes, but I'll show you a trick in just a second. Hang on. Okay. Wow, these guys are really nice to you. <gasps> are they being nice? They are. are we we'll not going to have we'll to switch? We'll see what it comes. There's, there's some good. Okay. <laughs> there's some good back and forth banter happening online. It's <laughs> oh, a good boy. thing you guys can't see the chat. Okay, so I'm just using a little bit of Windex. That's like my big back. Oh, big really? Windex. <laughs> now, you have to be careful that you don't use this all the time because it really will dry out your hands. But you can get most of the color off. We have a second bucket of just water, so I'm making sure I'm rinsing as well. And I didn't spray my palm, but most of the color, like the surface color, has come off. It does, it does take a little while, especially deep colors like black, yeah. to fully come off. I use simple green sometimes on my hands. Oh! Or lemon juice and sugar. And actually, what really works is um, that whitening shampoo. Oh, interesting. Yes. I don't think I have 
explored that. Yes. Usually when I'm working with deep colors, especially if I'm coloring the fondant, not necessarily when I'm using a black fondant that's pre-made, but when I'm coloring fondant, I almost always wear my gloves. Sorry guys, I'm spinning in circles. You guys have me reeling over here I about know, possibly switching. The whole back of my cake is screwed up. So if you get this one, this is the back. <laughs> Maybe we only switch one tier again and it's not the top tier. <laughs> Um, looks, yeah, usually wear gloves. That's my best recommendation to you. And of course, we have gloves. Yeah, but, but who's but, got time right but, now? Yeah, I don't have time. No, I don't. Too much going on. I have a hard time with gloves. I don't feel like I can feel what I'm doing very well. Yeah, and remember, if you're not going to use gloves, please make sure you are cleaning your hands with soap and water yes. constantly. Obviously, don't touch your face and. Pull your hair back and then go back to cake. Make sure you're staying clean, uh, very clean and using cleanly kitchen processes in order to keep everyone safe. Yes. Um, it looks like Lynette also has used OxyClean oh. um, in warm water and that takes the color right off for her too. Oh, wonderful. Very a nice. Tip. Piece of the tip. Um, and I have other people who are still lusting over the Fat daddy -O cake pans behind you, so we should mention that there are still three more sets that you can win. There are three more sets. <laughs> In fact, I think that might be our next item up. Yes. Would be another set of the cake pans. So but you're not you getting any if you make a switch cake. Yeah, <laughs> I'm keeping them. Ann and I are going to split them. She gets the even, I get the odds. If you make just, a swap, just we're, kidding. we're not... Uh, we're not sharing. So are these ones the three inch deep pans again or are they different? Um, there are two sets of three inch and two sets of two inch cake pans. So let's slip it up. I think the first time we did the three inch. So let's do the two inch cake pans. Okay, this perfect. Time. So in order to enter to win, all you have to do is leave a comment in the chat box to tell us what your favorite part is about this live sugar debate. And the winner will be selected at random from all the submissions in the various chats. And we will announce the winner by 12. Who won the semi, uh, the semi isomalt beginner kit? Oh gosh, kit? did we not even re mention that? I don't know, the only, I think, I only remember Michelle. But that was Pans, right? Was it Michelle? We yes. didn't, oh boy, so I didn't get the winner. I'm getting Isn't ahead of funny? myself here. Oh gosh, here we go, I'm sorry. The winner for the semi cake, what was what was it? I gotta go it's back. It's a beginner semi isomalt kit from Semi Cakes and Confections. Isomalt kit. Okay, the winner for that one is Dina Stoner. Congratulations, Ooh, congratulations. Dina. Congratulations, I'm Dina. I'm getting so wrapped up in the process here. I'm forgetting <laughs> to do my job. Yeah, us too. Yeah. <laughs> Please forgive us, Dina. If you're if you are still with us, you are the lucky winner. Congratulations. Semi cakes isomalt basics kit. Is anybody else sweating? Like yeah, we it's are? warm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was thinking it was chilly over here. Well, I'm not rolling yeah. on it. <laughs> We're getting our workout yeah, in. Yes, we are. We Meanwhile, Jody's just smacking Yeah, you guys need to there. like tap out. Do we need to do like a, a tag team sort of deal? <laughs> yeah. I can as roll. As long as you tag team in for Anne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. She's like, I don't want her, Anne. <laughs> Sorry, Jody. You can come over here, Jody. Clearly okay. with my elephant question, I got demoted. <laughs> we do love you. <laughs> you don't make us switch cakes. You can come but over here. But how cute of a cake would that have been if somebody were to design it, one with actual elephant? Yes, yes. Yeah. We've done 3D stand. elephants. And that See, Maybe that's how you save a cake that has you those issues. You turn it into an elephant. Yeah, there, there you go. go. See? See? Brilliant. She, she's here for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> not just a pretty face. That's right. right. Not just a pretty face. There you go. Okay. Okay, so I took my time with this one. We suddenly you're told her we're swapping. To I'm still nervous. Don't get me wrong. But this one went on so much better. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, I'm waiting for the results to come in here okay. on whether you're keeping or swapping. Oh no. We'll have our team pull that together quickly here and send it to me. Um, let's see here. Is the buttercream on the cake soft or hard when you put fondant on top? That's from Natalie. It is hard. 
and it is not frozen by any means. You want your cakes to be cold. So typically what I do is I, I bake all my cakes in one day, wrap them really tightly, let them sit in the refrigerator overnight. The next morning I will fill and ice them and let them sit in the refrigerator for the rest of the day. I tend to go back and do a final coat of buttercream that evening just because I like to be able to do all my buttercream in one day so that I'm not making buttercream twice. And then uh, on the third day is when I go in and uh, cover with fondant. And so that these cakes are cold. They have been sitting overnight in order to set up and chill. If we were to do this with a really soft cake, you would not get crisp corners. You would not get straight sides, typically. Um, you can, it's just much harder because every time you put any pressure on your cake, you're moving the buttercream underneath the fondant. So for me, uh, I don't know about you, Anne, but when I'm doing a sculpted cake that is uh, like a dog, for instance, while generally everything is pretty firm and set up for shape, I actually really love putting a fresh batch of buttercream like on his face, for instance. Nice soft buttercream, put fondant over it, and then I move the buttercream underneath the fondant to kind of shape his you know, eye sockets and those types of things. Yes. So there are instances where soft buttercream is key, but if you really want to get a nice, crisp, clean, sharp, straight edge, cold buttercream is the way to go. Well, the results are in, ladies. Oh. They're nice, but they're not that nice. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> is, this, is this good for us to have you switch right now? Does that mean you don't have to finish cutting there, Oh, Rachel? no, I'm cutting this. I'm oh. going to make it pretty for Anne. Well, that's very nice. So I think I'm, we're swapping, you guys. We're swapping. Oh. Um, <laughs> they, we didn't ask about how many tiers. So, okay. Um, I think one. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if you guys, will you sweat less if we only do one tier? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're like a Rachel. She's like, no. I'm already I can sweating. do it. <laughs> I'm already I sweating. I would sweat less. And I'll let you pick. You're my guest of honor for this very first competition. Yes, I pick one tier. You pick one tier. <laughs> and would you like the bottom, middle, or top tier? Well, to show your skills, it might be better if you guys switch them all. Oh, shit. Oh, whoops. Beep. Fine. <laughs> Sorry. Fine. We can switch them all. All right. We'll switch them all. Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is going to be exciting. Totally Let's see what happens. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Just put some decorations on it. It'll be fine. You guys will be great. Sorry. Okay. All right. We'll do it. Oh, man. You're pros. Gosh. Do you want me to tell you what I was going to do so you can do it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's okay. play fair. All right. I'm oh going to try to turn what yours into mine. See, I'm so flustered. I don't even know what I'm looking for. <sighs> This is very stressful. It looks like a bunch of the viewers have had the um, opportunity to see you guys do different things or attend some of your classes. Where are some other areas that people may have seen some of your work? Oh, uh, would you like to go? Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I did have a very prolific website. However, it is not up anymore because <laughs> my husband has taken it down. Um, I am on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I've been on Food Network and TLC Cake Off and lots of magazines and... I don't remember all the things. Okay. And Craftsy. And yes. yes. So uh, you, pr if you are a part of Craftsy, you absolutely know both of us from Craftsy. We both have many classes on the Craftsy website. Uh, we encourage you to check them out there. Um, you can find me on Creative Cake Design. Uh, you can find my actual work on episodes of Food Network Challenge, um, the pages of Brides Magazine, Martha Stewart, uh, all sorts of different publications. Most recently, you have probably seen me as a judge. I turned in my chef's coat to be a judge, which was awesome, on Hulu's a newest show called Baker's Dozen, episode four. Um, it, but check them all out, because they're all pretty amazing. And um, I also was a guest judge on Buddy vs. Duff in the most recent season, uh, season three. So. You've seen me a lot of places. Um, I love what I do. I know Anne loves what she does. We are going to be all over the place, hopefully soon. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, come check us out on all sorts of platforms, but especially creative cake design. It's my little baby right now. Don't tell my, my 
My little boy. Your actual baby. <laughs> <laughs> or my dog. Or your dog. Don't They're, tell my dog. The real baby. Real upset. I'm getting some serious backlash from the viewers. I think I'm going to be voted off the island for making you guys switch all your tears. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> They're like, you are so mean. This oh, is so Jody. Mean. This is very mean. I'm just I'm just the mouthpiece, everybody. Right, do, you, well. do you want this one out right now, or shall you, I put it away? No, you can put it away. Okay. I'm about to ruin your beautiful oh. tear here. Are there any instructions you have to give each other as you swap here? Well, that, I, that was one of my questions. Are we supposed to adapt our design we were going to have to what we have working with now, or are we just supposed to go with what we have and change it? I think that's up to you based on what you want to do at this okay. point. I do love your color scheme, though. I will say, Anne. Thank you. I like you. your three colors. Thank you. Don't get upset at what I'm about to do to your beautiful tear here. <gasps> you don't want to move to all black? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's bright. It's very bright. <laughs> Well, I was sticking with the glam. I know. I, I hear you, sister. I'm not mad. Okay, good. I'm mad at them out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I'm not. I gotta rethink everything now. I know. Oh man. Um, they're not sure if that. You know, I think the thing that they're getting upset about is that they don't understand where your visions were going. So maybe you can share what uh, you were going gonna to do. do. Okay. And then we can see where you guys. Is that going to skew though? Us? Well, that's true. We I. Mm. Mm. Maybe we'll take our visions to the new color scheme. There you go. Okay. That's a good idea. Right? Yes. We could try to so do we'll that. We'll do the same design, but with the new we color. New scheme. color. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Okay. Um, Ooh. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> this is not how it works, people. No. It is not. This is not how <laughs> it works. Just so you know. Ah, oh, brother. You did say there would be twists. And well, I, I knew there would be keeping twists. keeping you on your toes, for sure. I still yeah. agreed to it for Plus, some Plus, you know, reason. this is four hours of live viewing here. we got to keep it <laughs> true. interesting. True. That's very true. <sighs> we clearly know you both are very capable of doing beautiful cakes. So. Thank well, you. Sure. Especially when we know what we're doing with them. Yes. So we add the challenge of you answering questions and talking <laughs> about what the sponsors are giving and swapping cakes, and we're not asking much. Well, I don't know about the viewers, and maybe this is a quick poll kind of question just out of curiosity. I think it depends a little bit on how new they are to the cake world, but I, uh, so I personally am a self-taught decorator, meaning that I really only took a handful of classes via Wilton at a local uh, craft store, and the rest I've sort of just played and learned on my own. Um, some people... <clears throat> and have gone to culinary school, um, which is a wonderful option as well. But what, uh, what I'm getting at is, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I started getting into decorating more seriously, I was excited to be watching all the Food Network Challenge shows, and that's where I was learning a lot of my techniques. Not because they were talking to us about it, but just watching them on TV to see what products they were using, how they were using them, what texture they were putting on, how they were assembling their cakes. Were they using dowels or straws or that sort of thing? So the bonus to this particular live event is that you get all of it in one place, which is super exciting for us because I know that Anne um, shares the sentiment of uh, loving to express um, our passions and share our knowledge with all of you. So it's kind of a fun scenario where we get to teach and compete <laughs> and sweat at the same time. But um, yeah, I don't know. Is anybody else out there like learning from uh, all these cake shows on TV or are you taking classes? What are you doing? And there are a lot more classes out there than when we do and I started. Yes, that and there's a lot sure. more products out there. Yes. Um, we didn't really have a whole lot of products readily available to us 20, you know, 15, 20 years ago when we were first getting into this. So you guys should all feel very lucky if you're new to the cake world. There is so much more uh, out there for you. I still haven't pulled out your cakes. I'm really dreading this. <laughs> I'm really dreading what you're going to say when I, you start seeing what I'm going to um, do. No, <laughs> maybe you guys okay. can share your visions for your original when we reveal the final. Oh, yeah, Good we could idea. do that. Then people at least understand like where you were going and how you switched gears based on the challenge. I think that's fabulous. I think okay. that's a good idea, good. too. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to announce one more time that Dina Stoner was the winner of the Semi Cakes Beginner Isomalt set. We mm. haven't heard back from her yet. I know they've reached out so that they, you can claim your prize. So, Dina, if you're still with us, please make sure that you respond back to our team so we can get you that amazing giveaway. 
Do you still have some of your pink fondant? Oh, yes. Let me use that. It's this one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you need to patch it? <laughs> um, that's your top tier, right? Yeah. Okay. Or my I top tier. It's I my just, top tier. If you need more, I just added gold and a little more Oh, light. it's okay. I'm going to use this. You know, you guys are working very collaboratively together right now, so well. I think... Um, I think this will. Be, you guys are going to be able to make this work. And if for some reason you do feel like somebody needs to keep a specific tier of their original, cake, <laughs> she's backtracking here. <laughs> uh oh. So I think she's feeling I'm just the saying, guilt. I'm going to leave it up to your creativeness. <laughs> okay. Here. Thank you. Oh. Based on what you need to do. Okay. I don't want you guys to sweat. Oh, we're sweating. Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? Or stress. It's supposed to be fun, right? Oh, it's definitely fun. And I think the one of the best things that I have found out of all of the cake shows that I've competed on is I have made some of the best friends um, that I have ever had in my life just by being on a show and competing against somebody else. So, uh, you know, a lot of people shy away from competition and, um, and that's totally fine. But uh, I, I thrive under a little stress and competition myself. <laughs> so these are great situations for me to put myself into. But I think what I love about it most is just getting to meet all the other people who really love and share the same passion and um, you know you become friends for lifetimes. Yes I agree and the thing is that the cake world is pretty small so when you can find people that you can talk to about things that they understand it's kind of exciting. It is very exciting. Mm. The black. More black. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, that's really pretty. Is it? Yes. Gorgeous. Okay. I love the mixture of colors. It's really neat. Oh, thanks. I'm trying to put my color back on your cake. <laughs> so much for having a white cake. Bright. Let's color it black. Right. <laughs> oh, Rachel. There's nothing wrong with a black cake. No, I like a black cake. I was going I think it's, glam. They're stunning. I love them. So you're getting some responses to your question, Rachel. Um, Terry says, I learn from shows following different cake artists. I use recipes and tweak from Pinterest, as well as vintage family recipes, um, all sort of ways um, that she likes to incorporate the various things. She loves watching all the competition shows. Uh, nice. Let's see here. Catherine says, I watch baking shows, read, and still don't do much actual decorating, but I really enjoy watching it and seeing the wonderful end products. I'm with you, Catherine. <laughs> um, looks like Yvonne has taken some live cake classes before the pandemic. And Lynette says, I make cakes for fun, but have learned quite a bit from watching competition shows. I'm now taking some classes to learn more advanced techniques and it's part of why I signed up for premium with Creative Cake. Yay! We should have a bell that we ring yeah. every time yes. someone tells us. <laughs> totally. Wait, do we have something that sounds like an oven ding? <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Lynette. We're happy to hear that. I'm channeling a purple, see? Ooh. <laughs> I'm cutting out some floral appliques just to get, um, I don't know, when I think of glamorous, I really think of flowers. So that's my plan. I love her both trying to make the cake back to what, <laughs> <laughs> what we were happy for. I like how the pattern is showing it's up. It's actually now. really cool. Yeah. So it looks better in your cake than mine. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Is this like a watercolor technique here, Anne? Yes. It's pretty. So my original plan was to do this to my bottom tier, but it's actually cool because I'm getting the relief of the. Is it color alone or did you mix anything with that? Uh, this is gel color mixed with some grain alcohol. Uh, the grain alcohol dries, evaporates very quickly. Um, which is good because you don't want your cake to stay tacky. Uh, you can also use vodka, but the grain alcohol just dries quicker. 
It's a super high proof. It's flammable. So watch out, Anne. <laughs> Thank you for that tip. You're welcome. I will not light anything. I'm going to stay over here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I have any sources of fire, so I think we're safe. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure we have a torch somewhere around here. Oh, boy. We'll, we'll keep that away from me. Let's use it. So yeah, a big joke in the cake world is that you'll always see cake decorators with a big jug of vodka or oh, Everclear. Yeah. And people are like, oh, you're drinking that? And we're like, ah. <laughs> 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 I did one time, I had it in a water bottle to travel. <gasps> and I don't know how it wound up on my table, but I took a giant swig of oh, no. horrible, warm, terrible vodka. Oh, no. I it, like burned for like days. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys are going to earn a drink after this. Uh, oh, oh, that's I happening. Think so too. <laughs> How about that one's on me? Maybe I'll get back in the good graces All right. of our live All right. audience. I see here. where you're going. <laughs> I don't know about you, but um, I, so I, I'm not a big drinker. Uh, I do enjoy a casual beverage. Uh, <laughs> but I, I will say that I had a cake. Um, it, don't worry, it was just for a friend, not a client. That I was, I was really stressing over. I was having a rough day. Nothing was going right, and I stopped to have dinner with my family. It happened to be Mexican, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to have a margarita. Oh, I'm just having a rough day. Things are not going my way. I'm going to have a margarita, and it'll just be okay. And after dinner, I went back down to to keep decorating because <laughs> I needed to finish it. And let me just say, things went a whole <laughs> lot smoother. I was not judging myself nearly See? as much um, and it got done pretty quickly so maybe maybe alcohol during a competition is a given <laughs> it's maybe like not. cooler darts you just get better when you stop thinking yes, about it so exactly <laughs> except not if you do like Swiss dots <laughs> <I'll be laughs> like, I do have a cool question here from Natalie I'm not sure what she's making here but it sounds really yummy she said can you put fondant over rice krispies or do you have to put buttermilk over the rice krispies for buttercream excuse me over the rice krispies first um, I I can answer this and do you have a question yeah. or do you have an answer for well, this question I, I you I Go ahead. I do, but you. Okay. I want to hear yours. <laughs> oh, so that's what I was going to say. Oh. Um, I have done. I have done it with and without buttercream. Uh, there are certain uh, items that we create that look really great with uh, that like dimpled texture mm -hmm. that Rice Krispies give. I have a tendency not to use buttercream a whole lot. I actually use chocolate. So I use melted chocolate and cover my Rice Krispies because it fills in all of those gaps really nicely and it doesn't, um, it doesn't get wet and like uh, move. So when when I was using buttercream on Rice Krispie treats, I felt like they warmed up really fast, unlike cake. And I, w I felt like the buttercream just started to move underneath all of the fondant applications that I was doing. So I switched to just using white chocolate and I personally think it works really well. Yeah, I don't know. I'd say we, I usually would use for the most part, the modeling chocolate. Um, oh, got it. Yeah. And then I could like if we did like a dog head or something, we'd kind of sculpt it out. Sometimes I put buttercream on top of it a little bit, um, but the same thing, sort of what you said. I think it depends on what you're covering. I think if you're doing, we also found that um, when we made our rice krispies, we would not add uh, as oh as much marshmallow uh, or as much butter as much butter because then it stays oh yeah yeah harder. stickier and um, it and we we'd leave it out to dry so that it'd be like hard to eat. And then you can actually cut it and almost like sand it Shave down. Shave it, yeah. 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 Um, we looks like Pamela just joined premium as well. Yay, Pamela. Ooh, go Pamela. <laughs> she said she got into baking, watching um, all the competition shows, but her neighbors get the benefit of all of oh, her work. Oh, sweet. Um, she says she mostly has done cookie, cookies because she hasn't yet found a gluten-free recipe she likes. Um, probably for the cakes, huh? Yes. Yeah, gluten-free cakes are really tricky, I have to say. Um, and you can probably speak to this a little bit better. Just I know yes. that you are gluten-free as well. I um, am gluten-free. And yeah. I, I would tell you, it just all comes down to the flour mix. Um, there are quite a few good ones out there now, I would say. Uh, the cup for cup is a great one. And you literally just use your regular recipe and 
use the, the flour in, uh, instead of you know cake flour or all purpose flour. Uh, King Arthur's gluten free is pretty good. I noticed that some of them are better for cookies and some of them are better for cakes and you kind of want to try it with your different recipes. Um, sometimes I will reduce the amount of flour slightly, um, maybe by like 20%, just because it, the gluten free flour is a little bit heavier. It can sometimes dry out the cake a little bit. Um, but I do also find that things that have a lot of moisture, cakes that have a lot of moisture in them, like chocolate or you know, uh, extra sour cream or something like that, it usually works really well because it makes it a little bit more moist. It looks like Danielle made her first cake without a recipe when she was five. Anne, you might be able to relate to this since you started baking at six. Yes. <laughs> um, she said the only problem was I used a bit too much baking powder or soda, she can't remember. She said her next one was great, Unfortunately, her family didn't encourage her, but she recently got back into baking because Aww. her husband loves it. Awesome. And she you. just joined a premium Yay. as well. Yay. Ding, you know, don't give I, up. I wish my husband loved sweets more than he does because I think that was part of the reason why I didn't. His mom was a big baker. Um, but because, you know, I, one, I don't want to make all this and have it sitting around for me to eat. Right. <laughs> So if you don't exactly. have somebody at home that's going to enjoy it with you, you kind of have to resort to handing it out to yes. the neighbors or whoever. Yes. Um, when, when I moved from Connecticut to Colorado, again, I had to go through the whole process of redoing all of my recipes for high altitude. I was still working as a physical therapist, and so I literally, all weekend long, I would bake and I would bake multiple of the same recipe and then I would take that to work on Monday and everybody had to vote on which cake they liked best. So I had like three lemon cakes all lined up. They all had to sample it. They all had to tell me their favorite. And that's actually how I ended up developing most of my recipes um, once I got here or to Colorado. Um, cool. And yes, I was very loved <laughs> by yes. all of them. Course. Until they all were like, okay, no more cake. No more. We're, we're done. Yeah, there's a lot of chatter around um, gluten free. It looks like Amy had a recommendation um, that Jules gluten free flour oh. is the best, that she has a lot of That's, success with that. That is a good one, too. I've used a lot of them, I have to tell you. And uh, I noticed that, again, with, depending on the recipe, uh, certain flours sort of work better. I would just I would just recommend don't give up. Get, buy a bunch. Do a, make the same recipe with all, a few different flours and see which one you like the best. Uh, King Arthur does make a gluten free cake mix too, a chocolate one that's actually not bad, if you aren't feeling up to the homemade. Awesome. Ooh, I have a winner for our third giveaway of the Ooh. Fat Daddy O's cake pans. Janet King, if you are <laughs> listening. Can you please, we're I finding, don't need one. I don't need one, it's probably easiest to ask you to email us so that we can arrange the handoff for you. Um, if you could email us at social at creativecakedesign.com, we will make sure that we coordinate that prize for you. Janet King, please email us your information, social at creativecakedesign.com. And I'm going to do the same thing with Dina Stoner, who was our last winner, because we still haven't heard back from her. So if Dina, if you're on, if you can please send an email with your contact information to social at creativecakedesign.com, we will make sure that we get those prizes to you. Awesome. Looks like Amy has another tip here. Country crock butter sticks are amazing Ooh. for baking and buttercream, almond milk and coconut milk for blends. Yum. I like that idea. That works for me. I actually prefer um, almond milk or coconut milk in a lot of my recipes because it just adds another layer of flavor. Mm. Something you don't really get um, with just a straight up milk i think i'm going to throw our our next um poll here as well oh, God, there's oh. more <laughs> another one 
Don't well, worry. Crack? I don't think there's another swap in the next year. <laughs> that would be amusing. Uh, that would be really mean. I think Rachel would punch me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so our next poll is to ask our viewers whether they would like to incorporate the decor of flowers or figurines oh boy. into the cake. Please be nice to us. Yes. So flowers or figurines. Flowers. Figurines are not glamorous. Again, please. <laughs> Please type your I responses in the chat box. We will <laughs> tally all of those and let you know what you decide. So one little trick uh, when you're painting, paint the backside of something to get like what color it might be so that uh, you know what you're doing before you put it on the front side. Yes. Just a little That is. I did that tip. on your cake. Just oh, now. excellent. Yes. <laughs> I guess now it's my cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did that on your cake. I did that on okay. my cake. Not on my cake. Not on your cake. Oh, man. I'm a little disappointed you didn't pick purple for my current cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I was actually going back and forth between doing the middle to like a deep purple, but then I oh. thought you were going to do purple. Well, I was going to add some purple decor, but oh, um, I do have these colors over here, though, if you'd like to use them. So I have a random question for you, ladies. Okay. Yes. Um, just curious when you are, when people come to you to, to make cakes for special occasions and things like that, do you have a whole process you put them through of questions to better understand what they're looking for? Or do you find that they primarily just say, we'll leave it up to you. You do what you think is best. How much of that process do you guide and how much of that is kind of determined for you? So I will say that when I was first starting out as a cake designer, uh, I had a lot of questions for my clients. I really utilized all of their information to be able to design their cake. I think as I've grown and developed my own style and the, my own look to each of my designs, people now come to me because they want my creativity and they want my input on what they should do with their event. So it's not that I don't ask them questions still, I do. It's just that they're not coming to me, sir, would you mind helping me with this? <laughs> uh, um, it's not that I don't um, ask their input, I certainly do, um, but they're really looking to me for my guidance and my input and my creativity. And so I still ask all those questions, maybe some hot water, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, sorry guys, I have pink, pink, little pink thing that I can't get open. Um, but yeah, I think uh, a lot of times the questions that I'm asking are really revolving not only around the wedding or the event itself, but really about the couple, you know, what, what they're like, what they, um, how they met. You know, sometimes we're incorporating different elements of their story into their cake. And so it's important to really have an understanding of who your client is and what they're looking for when, um, when choosing a design for them or designing a cake for them. Uh, but yeah, full, full rundown of questions, all sorts of them. All right. Well, Where to go from here? So, uh, one of the things I am going to do is actually color uh, over top of these, but I do want some of the pink to show through still. I don't want to just layer this in all teal. So, um, the, the color that I'm using here is actually a teal dust with a little bit of grain alcohol. And then I'm hoping to add in a little bit of white edible food color, and that will uh, give me less of a translucent appearance and more of a, a true paint. I guess I could use this too. If, um, you can also mis mix in gel color, or uh, there are some really great paints available on the market this, uh, at this point, a, a handful actually. All right, I'm gonna go with this, because my strong gentleman's taking too long. <laughs> okay, I have some helpful information here for our viewers. We've been having a lot of folks ask if the video will be available for replay. And it will, it will remain on the same page as they are viewing from right now. Um, so Creative Cake Design, Craftsy, and the Creative Cake Design website. So if anybody wants to even come back and rewatch it again for some of these great tips that I know they're all gathering today, um, that would be a great way to do that. 
Oh, and I also have the answer to our last poll question. Oh, geez. So we asked the viewers to let us know whether we should incorporate the decor of flowers or figurines into the cake. Rachel's worried please, about flowers, this. Please. Answer is flowers. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, we're back. They're happy with us again. Thank you. Uh, Mm. Thank you. I was Yay. like, you got pretty far with your flower making there. You would have had to scrap <laughs> I would probably still use these because I am the type of person, I do not like to make things and then not use them there you because go. It, there's so much time that goes into this. Whew. Now, if they're in smaller little pieces like that, will they stay just as well in a Ziploc or does it have to be kind of a bigger mold? So this will absolutely stay well in a Ziploc for a long time. I am intentionally letting them dry. Okay. Uh, wet fondant, um, the surface of fondant when it is uh, a little sticky, it tends to make the paint, um, it doesn't adhere quite as well. So it's kind of like painting on a wet surface rather than painting on a dry surface. Painting on a dry surface just tends to, to hold a whole lot better. It doesn't bead up on you. So uh, I'm intentionally leaving these fondant uh, floral pieces out so that I have a nice dry surface to paint on. But yes, you could absolutely put them in a Ziploc and keep them soft. This is where we need like the the Jeopardy clock. have to call out to your tools every once in a while. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, totally. but when I can't find things, the first thing I have I do is just ask somebody else, have you seen? And then it's like right in front of me and I find it. In one of my craftsy things, I like literally spent like, because like the producer said they wouldn't help you. <laughs> and I was I spent like five minutes looking for my knife that was literally right in front of me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and they're all laughing. I'm like, can, can we edit that out maybe? <laughs> So one of the other uh, little tips that I'm going to give is this is just a straight pin on, a, it's one of our tools, but it's a straight pin. And I am just sliding it into my fondant decoration so that I then have something to control it with without putting my finger on and smashing the decor. So that's just a little trick of the trade. I'm using all of the bowls, I'm sorry. Do you um, need some bowls? There are lots of bowls. Okay. I'm good. I, I miss all of the ones that are over here. <laughs> if you need one, just holler at me. <laughs> I'll be okay. I'm using the piping gel that exploded in your Oh, suitcase. yeah. Yeah. Mm So just to be clear for any of the viewers, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. I am uh, I'm playing with some wafer paper. Excellent. Because you can never go wrong with wafer paper. And one nice thing is that it sets up quickly, not like gum paste, that we could do something like this with gum paste, but it would take a few days to dry. And this will be ready now. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that looks glamorous. Does it? I think we can all take our own take on glamorous right now. <laughs> <laughs> like my seven year old daughter's idea of glamorous would be very different than mine. And that's true.
tend to be very quiet when I paint. There's something very soothing to me about painting, so. I agree. Sorry if I'm not talking. They're probably like, but the two of you shut up. <laughs> 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 we could talk all night long, FYI. We're really good. Well, maybe this is a good time for us to take a quick little break. Okay. So why don't we do that to allow you guys to continue to work a little bit. Um, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. It'll be about five and a half minutes. And we encourage you to please enjoy some free instructional videos with Rachel from Creative Cake Design, which is your online resource for all things cake, where you can find everything you need from basic instruction to advanced techniques. We had one, three different winners that we've announced already, and when we come back, we will announce our fourth. So stay tuned, and we'll see you in about five minutes. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Tufel, and I want to share a handful of tips and tricks with you uh, working with fondant. Fondant is one of those things that can be really tricky, but if you follow a few easy okay. steps, I promise it will clear? be much easier for Standing you to use like as you make gorgeous okay. things. So the first thing with fondant is that when it comes in its package, it's pretty yeah. fun. I might go to the bathroom. It's yeah, hard, go for it. And it comes packaged <laughs> in uh, just a little bag of some what sort. What else do you guys need from me? I'm out. sorry, I'm all over the place. And oh, no, you're, you're good. good. You're doing great. Are we doing okay? Yeah. I think we can get hard. So my recommendation is to knead it first. You really need to get this moving before you're going to be able to roll it onto your cake. So just start by cutting off a small piece. You want to keep it manageable. You don't want to work with too much at one time. And always just twist up your bag so that it stays airtight for you. And then break this into a couple of pieces. Now you can see it's really firm. I'm putting a lot of pressure on here. So I wouldn't be able to roll this out really smoothly if I didn't knead it first. So I like to just get some small pieces and then squash it up a little bit. And you're gonna use the heel of your hand and push straight down on the fondant and then roll it back on itself and push again. And then I'm just gonna set that aside for a moment and squeeze the next one. You definitely get your arm workout when working with fondant. Again, just squish, rotate it a little bit, push your palm back down again. And then I just start a nice little pile. Push, turn, and squish again. Very technical terms here. Okay, and then when you have a few pieces, you, what you wanna do is actually just kind of put it in a little bit of a log, and you're gonna do that same process of kneading. So you're gonna bring your palm and fold it back on itself, and then just push. And you just wanna to continue to do this, and this is just a way of sort of warming up your fondant and getting it ready for what it's going to do in the next steps which is usually rolling it out and covering your cake with fondant. But you can't skip this process. Okay, so now our fondant looks nice and smooth. It's pliable. You can squish it and move it and do whatever you need to do with it. It's a very different contrast to what you see coming straight out of the bucket of fondant. So, um, so that's how you need your fondant. And now this would be ready to go for rolling out and placing on your cake. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tufel, and I want to share a couple of tips for you in regards to storing your fondant, which is one of the more important pieces when dealing with fondant. Fondant will actually dry out very quickly. It can get a crust on the outside edge. So once you have prepped and kneaded your fondant, if you're not using it right away, it needs to get wrapped up. So my best recommendation for you is if you have room in the original bag with no no other fondant inside of it. Just pile it all back in that original bag, squeeze out all the air, and tuck it away. But if that's not an option, because you haven't needed it at all, all you need is a little bit of plastic wrap as well as a Ziploc bag. 
So just take a nice long sheet. And what you wanna do is cinch this as tight as you can. So I usually start on one end and I fold it over on itself, pushing any of that air out. And then I'm actually just gonna pull back on it, tighten it up and just roll it. And this way, all of the air has been cinched out from around the fondant and it won't allow it to dry. Now, this will definitely hold, even if you're just gonna use this a little later um, after kneading it within a couple of hours. But if you're gonna store this long-term, you really need to get it into something that has a little bit more protection. So any sort of plastic bag will work. And again, cinch it down to one corner, try to get all that air out as best you can. I like to just keep folding it over itself and that sort of works all the air to the top. And then just make sure that your Ziploc bag is nice and tight and sealed. And then you can just leave this out. Again, if you're gonna use this within a day or two, totally fine. Um, just like this, you can also store it right back inside of the bucket because this is also going to um, eliminate a lot of the air that can kind of come in and out. Just make sure this is sealed nice and tight. So that's how you wanna make sure you store your fondant to preserve it so that it'll last a little bit longer. Welcome back to the Competitive Cake Duo. We hope that you enjoyed that video. We are back. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Feeling the pressure. Are you? Time it looks is like ticking you're away. making some more progress, though. It's amazing what you can do in five and a half minutes huh? <laughs> and run to the bathroom yes. all at the same time. So what are we doing right now, Rachel? I am just painting some of my floral appliques. I'm trying to utilize some of the other colors that are in the overall cake design and try to tie each of the tiers together. Nice. So that's my thought process. And are you still working with some watercolor technique here, Anne? Yes, so I'm watercoloring my wafer paper and then I'm gonna make these little decorations with them. Um, I'm bringing the black and then uh, some of the other colors that I used on that other tier. So hopefully, and a little bit of gold, it ties it all together. Really pretty. I'm hoping everybody can see what you're doing on the paper there. Beautiful. I'm gonna Ooh. make my way back over to my desk and leave you guys to continue the creative process. Okay. I'm going to see what our chat is doing here and if we've got more questions from our viewers. <laughs> Looks like our mics were maybe on for a little bit during the break. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oops. It is live TV, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises here. <laughs> Well, good thing you didn't take yours to the bathroom. <laughs> no, no kidding. Good night. Gosh. That's all everyone needs to hear. Oh, here we have a question from Judy. How does wafer paper work? Okay, so wafer paper is a very cool little tool. Um, you can do so many things with it. You can make flowers out of it. You can make um, ruffles out of it. You can make uh, these cool sail things. If um, I had some more time, you can, like what I'm doing basically, but really wet them. Uh, with some piping gel and water and then you can kind of mold them and they look like very fluid 
um, but you have to let them dry overnight or put them in an oven. Um, I'm just using them to make these little triangles right now that I'm going to use as decoration. But they're very light and airy, much lighter and airier than you would get from uh, anything else, really. Yeah, it's a very unique texture um, compared to a lot of the sugar products that we traditionally use on cakes. You know, most of our most of our decor is made out of modeling chocolate, gum paste, uh, fondant, um, sugar, and so there aren't a whole lot of translucent type materials that we use. And wafer paper is one of those that works really well for that. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, translucent. Yes. yes. Yeah, uh, the isomalt is really great oh, for yes. translucency too. That is true. Um, but it is a slightly more challenging medium to work with because it's hot sugar. You have to be really careful. Yes. So some some people shy away from utilizing isomalt because of that factor. Um, but you can still get some great great techniques. Yes. Well, this might be a good time for us to announce our fourth giveaway, which is a baked out goat which is from Bake Deco and with a Fat daddy -O turntable. Ooh. Is that correct? Nice one. Yes. So for a chance to win, um, definitely leave a comment in the chat box and tell us what your favorite part of this live cake de decorating competition has been so far. Our winner will be selected at random from all the submissions in the chat on Creative Cake Design, Craftsy, Facebook, and YouTube, and we will announce the fourth winner by 1230. And just a friendly reminder, before the break, we had winners Michelle, Dina, and Janet. So hopefully you three have connected with somebody from our team and have made arrangements on how to collect your giveaway. Awesome. Yeah, the Fat Daddy O turntable is uh, quite nice. It um, it is made of plastic, but it's pretty heavy duty still, and um, just has a very lovely spin to it. Uh, I, for one, do not like. Uh, icing my cakes without a turntable, it really makes your life a whole lot easier. So if, you, if you're thinking about which tools you might want to invest a little bit of money in uh, for decorating, it really is a turntable and some good offset spatulas, a nice straight edge. Uh, that's going to help you just really achieve a great look with your buttercream for all of your buttercream cakes as well as your fondant cakes what she said yes <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you're lucky you had the turntable yesterday because I've that's, I've had that problem where I don't have a turntable and I'm using like a bucket and, yeah and it is much harder it it really what's interesting about icing a cake in buttercream using a turntable is I actually use the turntable more than I use anything else because it just helps everything glide smoothly mm -hmm. and, and flow rather than trying to force your icing into certain uh, areas. So, yeah, it's a huge help. I mean, you're painting or decorating a cake. It comes in very yeah. handy. Piping borders on cakes. A turntable is super helpful. You know, when you're doing small stuff like this, maybe not so much um, unless you're doing like a cookie, for instance, where you're piping a lot of different colors or even, um, you know, painting a cookie, even even something like this. I really could paint with this uh, on a little cookie turntable, but because I can't really touch the edges, otherwise I'll, you know, make it a little misshapen. Uh, the turntable isn't an option for this particular style. I would guess that several of these tools are probably things that people could request as stocking stuffers for the yes. holidays. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, a lot of them are not expensive, like Rachel was saying. Um, and at the Craster, they always have those 40% off coupons. You can get a lot of them. And even a lot of, we use a lot of clay tools in cake. Yeah. Um, so think outside the box, really anything that you think would be a cool imprint. I mean, a lot of people, we use the, the cover of the halogen the big light oh uh, yeah yeah she so used like a cultured pattern mm -hmm. and we'll use that as an imprint mat 
It looks like Natalie is getting creative for this season. She said she's making a centerpiece of Christmas presents made from styrofoam and then covering them with fondant. Ah, oh, very nice. cool. She says she's not using cake because they will sit out for several weeks, but she's wondering if you have any concern with the fondant holding up being out for that long. As long as um, it doesn't get wet. Yes. Or it, it, the other issue is any a direct sunlight where it might cause it to heat up too hot and melt or lose color. So just try to keep it out of direct sunlight and you'll be good for months, literally. Yeah, literally, yes, because all of our display cakes would be out for yep. years. Yep. Um, and just use shortening to cover the cake or something. Don't use butter, obviously, because it will. Go yeah, bad. styrofoam. Um, to put fondant on styrofoam, you you do need to get it either wet with water or piping gel or yes. shortening. Yes. One of the three options, just to allow the fondant to stick to it. You don't want to put buttercream underneath it or anything like that, though. That will go bad. The other option for all of your supplies, so I know you're still holding out to see if you've won the Fat Daddy O's turntable, <laughs> but if you have downloaded the coupon book, there are amazing coupons in there um, for you guys to be able to purchase whatever you would like. Um, I know specifically that Bake Deco has a 15% off coupon for all Fat Daddy O and Satin Ice products, I think minus the big, huge 10 pound tub of fondant. But, um, you know, if you're looking for that turntable, head over to Bake Deco, take a peek, get your coupon, and you'll be good to go. I am almost done painting, Anne. Almost. Are you? It looks great. Thanks. It's actually kind of kind of fun that we switch cakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not totally out of the woods, people, but it's kind of fun because it's kind of fun to see what you're gonna do. Well, yeah. With my cake, and I, it's gonna do. And I had big plans for that black and white I know, cake, and I'm totally ruining it. it it's so. not black and white anymore, it's be, so it's gonna be hard to <laughs> you. <sighs> Lauren just made a comment online. She said, Anne, you made her remember her pottery classes in college. She's like, cake decorating and decorating a clay pot are very similar. Very similar. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I dabble in fashion when I'm not here moderating. Moderating, like this. okay. Um, and I see a lot of overlap in this too with color and textures yes. and patterns and Tons. just the creative piece. And then you talk about Rachel with your questions for incorporating people's personalities and things into the the cakes you're being hired to create and yeah. so much of that is similar for me as a wardrobe stylist i have to ask a lot of questions to get Ooh, to know them we we need to get with jody yeah, we do. <laughs> i you know i may be extremely fashionable when it comes to cake but for myself i could use all the help I <laughs> so jody we're, we're gonna have to hook up after this well it's fun it's the creative process right it's just being able i think that's why we can sit and watch this for so long even if we don't have skills in this area because sure. it just stimulates those portions of the brain for us yeah that's great Oh, somebody's asking about the cake safe behind you, too. Oh, that is oh, going to get to that, aren't that's we? That's coming up. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's a lifesaver, truly. When I, and you guys, if, you know, if you've delivered any cakes at all, <laughs> small or large, uh, the cake safe is truly a life-saving box for me. <laughs> um, it allows me to take cakes to the top of the back roads of the mountains to get to the, you know, it, most of the time people think of ski resorts and they think of, you know, taking the ski lift up and there's a little mountain lodge up there and you can chill and hang out up there, which is great. And then you ski down. Um, but during the summer we do a lot of weddings up there and oftentimes we are driving our cars up these back road mountain like dirt <laughs> roads with cakes in the back and if they are not uh, protected properly 
Um, my first couple of years decorating cakes, I had no idea what I was getting myself into delivering up to the mountains. And I did not have a cake safe. And I can remember hitting a bump. There was a big, huge pothole in the middle of this dirt road up on the mountainside. Oh my gosh. <laughs> missed it completely. I had no idea. I didn't see it. Um, but my car did not miss it. Oh. And I just, I remember hearing this like thud <laughs> and thinking, it's like a body. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that wasn't the case. And honestly, what happened is the whole cake like bounced. I mean, the whole car was bouncing. So of course the whole cake bounced and it came right up off of the box that it was in. It was just a cardboard box and the top of it hit the the cardboard box and it was buttercream and i just remember opening my door and seeing this slanted cake on top and i just thought oh my oh gosh no. what am i gonna do this is not okay how do i hide a slanted buttercream cake you can't fix that on site it's just it's not feasible and uh, luckily i was able to cover it with a bunch of fresh flowers on the top and nobody knew but that that was like the turning point for me to say okay let me really seriously look at what options there are for transporting cakes. And Cake Safe was like the only option 15 years ago when I first started uh, delivering cakes to the mountains. And I, I truly don't deliver cakes without it anymore. Even if I'm just popping down the street uh, to drop something off somewhere, I always take my Cake Safe because it has a rod that goes right through the cake. It holds it center. You can tip your box 45 degrees. You can put it on a plane. Um, I do that all the time and nothing happens to your cake. It's amazing. So if you are struggling with deliveries, the cake safe is the best investment you can make in uh, delivering cakes. Well, you're creating a frenzy here now. Everybody oh. wants to win this. So, well, it is. So that's coming up. You guys have important. to stay tuned to see yes. when we do that giveaway. Um, but let's introduce our six poll question. Oh, Wait, there's more? How many do we have? Well, this from awesome. what I understand, there's at least seven. So oh. we're getting there. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, the sixth poll question is utilizing a technique. So we want to know from our viewers, do you want hand painting Whoop. or airbrushing? <laughs> hand painting. Hand painting. Hand painting. <laughs> you guys both agree on that, huh? Hand painting for the win. That's what you say? Well, I think we're both already doing that, so... Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, let's see what the... We'll see how nice they're going <laughs> to be Can't wait. They shouldn't have said that. I can't wait to airbrush a black cake. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, please write your answer in the chat, and we will compile all of those, and then let Rachel and well, Ann know what cake, you've decided. Another fun right. twist to keep you on your toes, oh, ladies. Goodness. Thank you. Well, we so don't much. need any Thank more. You. <laughs> I was just getting like, all right, all right, I can see this happening. I have, I have my vision. Yeah. You guys were just getting re resettled, huh? Yeah, yeah. totally. Your footing again. Well, well, maybe they'll be nice to us again, Anne. Maybe. They were nice with the floral thing, but they I'm guessing they're nice. going to want to see airbrush. Oh. <laughs> airbrush is boring. I was trying to sway them away from I'm going to airbrush my cake later anyway a little bit. So oh, yeah? you see it? Yeah. Oh. oh, some are getting specific. It's not only whether it's airbrushing oh, or geez. hand painting. It's the colors <laughs> they'd like to see. Oh, oh. oh wonderful. Oh, boy. Do you guys want to hear a funny story? Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, it was the end of the night, like very late. And, you know, we got a little slap happy, as you would do when you work for 25 yes, hours, hours in a row. on end. Mm -hmm. And my staff decided it would be really funny to spray, to airbrush abs onto my pregnant belly <laughs> <laughs> with airbrush color. I love it. It was wow. hilarious. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that that's a lot of gold in that bucket, Anne. Well done. Sorry. That's okay. Now, Sorry. do you ever combine those two techniques together? Airbrush and painting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. wow. So yeah. either way, right? Yes, Nothing should fine. be for... For, for not. No. No. I, th I think it'll, I think it, whatever they choose is an easy incorporation, I think. Okay. Um, uh, obviously, with kind of coming in with an idea of what, I, what direction I wanted to go, but then having you guys switch these things up on me, anything's possible. Well, they've both been watching you hand paint here for a while now, right? So yeah, yeah. so that's they why probably want they some probably airbrushing. want airbrushing. They want to okay. get some techniques and tips from you guys around that. Okay. Well, um, I'm actually, I'm not going to lie, I'm really excited about airbrushing because I found a really cool airbrush. <laughs> yes, that um, is very cool. 
So we travel in with a lot of our supplies and materials and we have to be very specific about what type of items we're, we're putting in our bags and uh, what we can carry easily. And normally you have this like huge air compressor and a long cord and then you of course have your air gun and all your little paints. But I found the most adorable is airbrush I ever. Need that. I am so excited to use this. So I kind of really hope you guys say airbrush. Um, but even if you don't, I'm going to use it because it's too cute not to. But it's literally battery powered. You charge it. It's portable. This is going to like make my life a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have found it sooner because I would have made them a sponsor and gave it away. Because um, maybe literally, it's it's just. What, have you seen this? This no, thing is it's so amazing. cute. Who makes it? Like literally. What's the brand. I don't know. Well, we'll find out. I'll have to. I'll have to post it at some point. But you just put your little paint in inside this top cap. I just gotta get the cap off. Yeah. Ooh, maybe it twists on so then it doesn't spill. Yes, probably. Uh -oh. It might pop off. Well, they'll normally they pop off, but yeah. this one. Oh, oh, there it goes. Yeah. So you put your paint in, in the top, and then you put your little thing on, and. Mm -hmm. Boop, boop. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. So pick airbrush. I'm all for it. Can't wait to try that. Okay, let me pull out a cake and get these what little guys on. I want chocolate. Oh, which tier? Mm. I think I lost it. Oh, it's right here. Mm. So we should probably recap all of the choices that are decisions that our viewers have made thus far that have been directing how okay. this creative process is going. So okay. that's the cool part about all this for anyone who has joined us a little later in the program here is that you guys are completely working on the fly and pivoting as needed based on the answers we're getting from the viewer. So how you as a viewer participate is when we throw a poll question up, all you have to do is type your answer in the chat and then we will tally those and direct Ann and Rachel accordingly. So here are some of the um, specific polling results thus far. We asked you guys about style and you chose glamorous. We asked you about color scheme and you went with bright. We asked about decor and we went, was it organic? Yes. Organic, yes. thank you. I'm trying to remember all these now. Yep. Then we asked if we should be mean or nice and let them keep <laughs> their own cakes or switch them up. Okay. And we made them swap. That's when I got voted off the island. <laughs> <laughs> and then we asked some more decor questions around flowers or figurines, and y'all chose flowers. So this last poll was around technique, hand painting or airbrushing. So let me see if we've got any results coming in for this here. Okay. It close. looks like the oh, answer yeah. <laughs> is airbrush. Airbrush. Airbrush it is. Okay. And here, here's a good reason. Um, one of our viewers, Terry, said that just bought one and I don't know how to use it. Uh, that is oh, a good reason. So this would be super helpful yes. for you guys to show some technique around this. For sure. For sure. Okay, so one thing that you always want to do when you're applying decor to a cake is look for your flaws and your imperfections and then cover them up so nobody knows. So I am... <laughs> what are you saying about my cake? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Your cake is beautiful. My cake is no, beautiful that is terrible. now. Yeah. Um, so I have a tendency just to kind of spin it around, take a peek, look and see if I need to cover anything up, and then I will place, um, you know, a piece there. It just sort of depends on, you know, if you have a specific, thank goodness you guys picked organic at this point, um, <laughs> because if you have a specific design that you really need to follow, it's not as easy to do that. You can certainly plan for, you know, different areas of your cake to have decor, um, but if you're following something that's very rigid and you don't have the flexibility to kind of put things wherever, uh, that makes it a little bit more challenging. See, I knew you'd like that. Oh, yeah. I, I left the giant gaping hole in the back of the cake. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> Have you wow, made your those flower are so yet? pretty. This is amazing to watch, especially for somebody like me who does not know how to do this <laughs> at all. It's funny, we even have some viewers that aren't 
um, bakers. I know, for instance, that my husband, Paul, is tuning in. Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. He's, hi, Paul. <laughs> he's like, this is so fun to watch <laughs> you guys. He's like, I'm learning all kinds of things about baking a cake. Decorating. So when you get home, there'll be a cake waiting for you. Yeah, right. I don't, think so. I don't think I'm that lucky. Oh, um, come on. Come on, Paul. Paul, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's going to be like, really? <laughs> so those do fold right up over the top, huh? They do. So again, off? this one is, this one's fondant, so it's not fully dried. And so it has that little bit of flexibility. And even if it um, tears or cracks a little bit, like those types of things are very easy just to mend and cover up. So yeah, they can absolutely fold over edges. Um, I probably, it, in a traditional situation, not necessarily in a competition like this, uh, I probably would have done the, the floral appliques out of modeling chocolate rather than fondant because they will they actually hold up a whole lot longer and they stay really flexible for a long time the the problem is i want my background to match what is already here and so in this case and covered her cake in fondant, which is great and works wonderfully. And so I wanted to use the same fondant color so that it blended a little bit better with the background. So my personal preference is modeling chocolate here, but fondant absolutely works and it's not a problem. Do you ever mix modeling chocolate and fondant? I do that sometimes. I do, yeah. yeah. I like mixing them um, when, um, when I have a deep, pattern yeah um, it, it just holds a little bit better but still like smooths Multiple. onto a cake nicely too yeah. it's so fun to see the comments they're like i had no idea where rachel was going with the partial painting of the <laughs> and now i see it but we do have a lot of questions around how you guys are attaching the flowers like what are you get using to make them stick to the cake um, so I personally, right at the moment, am just using a little water because remember fondant in, uh, in modeling chocolate, fondant, gum paste, they're all sugar in its base. And when sugar gets wet, it gets sticky. So this is, um, well, this is actually a little bit of the fast drying uh, grain alcohol, but um, what I like about it is because uh, I, they're thicker pieces, I want I want enough alcohol to get on here and get wet and make it a little bit tacky, but I also want it to dry fast so that it doesn't slide. And so this particular uh, grouping that I'm placing here is put on with a little bit of grain alcohol. So you can see like it's starting to slide right now because there's too much alcohol on it. So if you just take that off, I'm gonna get just a dry brush, wipe that back off and then try again. So now I, it's a little tacky, but it's not wet just because it's the grain alcohol. And now it will stay put. So you can use water, you can use alcohol, you can actually use a little bit of piping gel or gum glue. Uh, if it's a larger piece, you might need to use something that's a little bit more stable, like a white chocolate that is melted, and then you use a little cold spray to adhere it. It just depends on how heavy your decor is. So each of, each of the decor items that I choose to put on my cakes, I, I sort of have you know, my go-to for, for attaching them as well. And that tends to be just alcohol because it dries fast, but um, you know, bigger objects, they really need something that's gonna hold a little bit better. So chocolate, maybe even royal icing. And I often use uh, an icing that's made out of uh, shortening and confectioner sugar and corn syrup. And I use that because um, you can take the item off if you put it on. See, Rachel is much better at these things. And she probably puts it on and it's perfect. But I put it on and I'm like, ugh, I don't like that. So then I want to take it off. Now, if I'd use you know, something like piping gel, you're going to have a big blob on your cake. So um, that can easily be wiped off. But it, it doesn't always hold as well. So it's kind of a... a you might want to go in first with that, my kind of icing and then really solidify it later. <laughs> it's a personal preference. Like I think so often a lot of people feel like it, there's just a set way to do something. And with sugar, it's just not like that. There, there may be some general rules to follow, but I think that's why I like 
playing with sugar so much. And I literally say playing with sugar. I'm not working with sugar. I'm playing with sugar. This is so much fun for me. Like I, it is kind of a place for me to just be creative and not think too technically, I guess is probably the right way to put that. Um, it's fun. It's, it's something that you get to explore with. You don't have to follow all the rules. Like I said, sure, there's some general rules that work really well, but you can always break the rules and try something new and different and see if it works. If it works, fabulous. If it doesn't, it's okay. Try something new. Try something different. Can we zoom in on what Anne is doing right there? We've got some viewers asking to see if we can get a close-up. I'm um, using Rachel's paint palette <laughs> as flower formers. And I'm basically I'm using modeling chocolate just because it's going to set up quicker than gum paste. And I'm just going to make an abstract kind of fantasy flower. I'm just using circle cutter. And I am, I'll show you what I do here. I cut it. I, I first have to roll this really thin. You really want to have, when you're making flowers of any sort, you really want the paste or modeling chocolate to be very thin because it looks more realistic, obviously, unless you're kind of trying to go for a cartoony look. And it's called a ball tool. And this just, you can add a little ruffle to the edge. I need a little sugar on that. It kind of thins it out and gives it a little bit of a ruffle, as you can see. And then I'm just going to kind of pinch the bottom together. And I'm just using these little forms just to give it a little shape so it looks natural when it's together and not flat. Normally I use bigger ones, but I didn't bring them with me. So we will see how it looks. <laughs> One thing I like about the cake decorating in general too is that, you know, uh, I love all, sort, all sorts of medium of art, obviously. I love to draw and paint. But the thing is, is that, I just think Rachel mentioned our type A personality. And when I draw or paint, I go back at it and I look and I'm like, ugh, I don't like that. And I'll be like, tempted to just rip it up and throw it away. And cake goes out the door or gets eaten. So you don't have to stare at it forever. So it's, <laughs> you have the chance to make a new one when, you know, if you really don't like the way it turns out. It's not just staring at you on your wall. <laughs> well, I have our winner for our fourth giveaway if we want to announce that right now. Yeah. So this was for um, Bake Deco's giving of the Fat Daddy-O turntable. And our winner for that is Danielle Noon Weinberg. And Danielle, if you would please email your contact information to social at creativecakedesign.com, we will be sure to get that over to you. So again, it's Danielle Noon, Nun, might be Nun, N U N N hyphen Weinberg. Congratulations, Danielle. Yes, yes, that's exciting. You're gonna love your turntable. So I know that we're sharing a lot of tips and tricks and um, you guys have lots of questions, which is fabulous. Uh, one of the places that is great for um, not just connecting with instructors like ourselves, but also with other people who are knowledgeable in the sugar industry is to join our Creative Cake Design Facebook page. And it is a private page where we can go in post some photos, ask some questions, get some tips and tricks. So it's a great place for all of us just to be able to connect and share and help each other, um, which to me is really all what this community is about. It's about learning and sharing and being able to pass on the art of cake decorating to anybody who wants to learn, but also to make sure that our craft continues to grow and um, that we, we all can be successful in making um, beautiful cakes. So I hope you will join me over there. I will definitely be popping in to answer questions and post some things on my own as well. So if you're if you're looking for some interaction, that's a great place to head. All right. I'm hesitating to pull out the airbrush quite yet because I don't want it to go everywhere yet. Oh. Um, what color are you airbrushing? I was thinking I was gonna go with teal. Oh wow. I know. Do like, it up, girl. Not not gonna hold anything back here. Okay. Um I will mention this, when I airbrush at home, I actually use uh, an airbrush box by CakeSafe. And it, 
Cake, so Cake Safe, Cake Safe has a lovely transportation box, but they actually have this really cool filter that has uh, acrylic boards to it that sort of encloses your space. And it has a fan that basically pulls all the air that is in front of this box and it pulls it out through a filter. And so it catches all of your excess airbrush. So it doesn't go all over your kitchen and all over like basically through your vents and to the rest of your house too, if you're baking in your own home. Um, but it's, it's, a fabulous piece of equipment to help prevent this overspray of airbrush colors. So I encourage you to pop over there and use their coupon through our coupon book um, and get that as well. They, they have a lot of great products, so I encourage you to check them out. I think I'm just going to go for it. Do it. Teal gets everywhere. Well, I'm using teal too. So sorry. It's cold. I'll just have <laughs> You sound very sorry. Yeah, I'm real sorry. <laughs> sorry. About this. I blame all of you. Yeah, really. We were friends until the airbrush. Well, <laughs> yeah. Rosina was asking if there are specific airbrushes for cake and food use. Yeah, so there, there absolutely are brands that are specifically made for airbrushing cakes. However, any airbrush can do the same job. So don't feel like you have to specifically get a cake airbrush. Any airbrush will work. Um, just don't cross over your medium. So if you're gonna get an airbrush for decorating cakes, Keep this one, a food safe airbrush, only use food safe colors in your airbrush. Um, I know a handful of people use airbrushes for makeup, which is really cool, but we wouldn't wanna put makeup in this one and then rinse it out and clean it and then put food color in here. We just, you don't want that kind of cross contamination. So just buy an airbrush that's designated specifically for using it on uh, cakes. Let's see. But most oh. of them are big and loud, so this is very exciting. Yeah, this is really cool. So uh, I think I mentioned a little bit earlier about the airbrush. This particular one is portable. When normally you have this huge cord and you just kind of wrap it around your arm and you can do it, but you're limited to like a certain space. I am so excited about the portable airbrush now and very inexpensive as well. Not nearly as expensive as a lot of people think, so. Um, I need a little baby jar. Did you use all the jars? I used everything. I told okay, you. Okay, it's okay. What do you What do you need? It's I, all good. I'm good. I would have put your. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little. Wait, let me find one. Test color here. Maybe we have more. Oh, you didn't have to go get me a jar. Well, they're not very <laughs> small. Why well, use them all? I it's okay. Know. I'm good. I. Oh, what I'm, about one of these? I need one of these. She's so helpful. <laughs> Again, the guilt. You guys work well together. <laughs> oh, perfect. There's a big bowl. Oh, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> oh, God. So there are colors, gel colors, uh, for decorating with fondant and uh, coloring buttercream and all of that. And just like you would expect, there are actually uh, specific colors made for your airbrush as well. And basically the difference, oh, I really should have put a glove on for that. <laughs> um, basically the difference between a gel color and uh, airbrush color is that the airbrush color is alcohol based, allows it to dry very quickly rather than a gel base, which is uh, made from water basically. Now you can use grain alcohol with a gel color to create your own airbrush colors. It's definitely doable. I just find occasionally you end up getting some chunks of paint in there, it clogs your airbrush, then you gotta take time to clean your airbrush out. So it's usually easier just to use straight airbrush color rather than using gel. And you could also use, um, not to interrupt you, but <laughs> I use a lot like the, the, the luster powders. Oh yeah, you luster mix powders with mixed vodka. with grain alcohol yeah. um, works great too. Okay. Oh boy. Let's see. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, while you girls are working on that, let's announce our fifth giveaway. Mm -hmm. It's another Oops. set of the Fat Daddy O pans. <laughs> too hard. Too, too hard. We did the three inch pans for our first giveaway. We did the two inch pans for our second. So, what are we giving away this time, Rachel? For the Fat Daddy O, let's do the, the back to the three inch again. Back to the three inch. Okay. So, this will be for our three inch deep Fat Daddy O pan, cake pan set. 
So in order to get entered for that giveaway, all you have to do is post in the chat one of your favorite things about the live event today. One thing I should mention about airbrushing is that um, don't be alarmed when you go home and blow your nose. And it is <laughs> all of the colors, I'm, all of you people too out there because it travels. It does, it does. That's why I'm like hesitant to start airbrushing it's already right. because all right. we're all gonna end up with teal noses mm -hmm. very shortly. But that's why I highly recommend the airbrush box from Cake Safe because it, it really cuts down on all of that mist that just goes right into the air and unfortunately, up your nose. <laughs> you could also wear a mask. I will, uh, I will say that. We're all sort of used to wearing masks these Very days. Very true. You can absolutely wear a mask if you want to help prevent that. All right. And then the other thing that's important when you're airbrushing is, first of all, you want to make sure you have the right color before you go to your cake. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of color into the airbrush first. Not a lot, just a little. You want to make sure you don't have any dripping because if it drips off the airbrush and onto your cake, there isn't a whole lot you can do. You can try to pull it off, but it's not easy to do. I'm gonna let that sit for a moment. And again, the turntable is your friend. <laughs> so, I'm gonna bring my turntable in. And I am, I'm gonna need a paper towel. So one of the ways to know what your airbrush color is, is gonna be is to make sure that if your cake is white, use something white to see what the color of your airbrush is going to be. If your cake is teal or purple or whatever other color, just use an excess piece of fondant, roll it out and just leave it sitting so that you can have a test uh, location to be able to see what color is gonna come out. And there's, uh, there's a couple of different methods with your airbrush. We'll have a far more in-depth lesson on creative cake design, but basically there's two pressures. One is gonna be just pulling down, and that starts the air, and then down and starting to pull back adds color. So, and then it's just a matter of, you know, keeping your airbrush at a certain distance away. And that last piece that just happened there, that's called a spray. It's like an overspray, basically, and that's just because it builds up on your tip. I think I'm gonna take this plastic tip part off. There is a hole on it, which is great, but I think it's... I'm just gonna take my white stuff over here. That's a good <laughs> idea. That's the other thing you wanna do is make sure you don't have like normally I would save airbrush for the very last thing that I'm doing and I would not have anything else sitting out because everything that's out right now is basically going to turn teal. Yeah. Um, it is very true. It, right. it literally just puts a coating on everything. Are you using a Fat Daddy-O turntable by any chance? This is, uh, I believe this is a Fat Daddy-O turntable, but it's the low one rather than the tall one. Oh, I'm going to put more in because I like my color. Sorry. Why are you sorry? I don't know. No, don't be sorry. I always say sorry. Don't be sorry. I do too. I'm just curious how big your kitchens are at home. <laughs> my kitchen's pretty I mean, big. To, to, <laughs> store, to store all these tools and all these oh, things. I'm well, guessing you guys need a lot of space. Half of my stuff is in my basement and in my mother's house. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so mom, if you're watching, I know I'll get it out by January. That was the promise. <laughs> Um, I think it's not so much just about like how much storage you have, but being conscious about how much stuff you just have in general. Like, don't overdo it. There's no reason to overdo it. Buy your necessities. And, um, you know, when you've been around the industry for 16 plus years like we have, uh, you accumulate a lot of stuff that you don't need. <laughs> so true. purge every once in a while. <laughs> Very true. I suppose that goes for everything, not just yes. cake stuff. 
that whole, does it bring you joy thing? Yeah. Yes, yeah. And the, the trends change. We were just talking about that last night, that, you know, what was in style five years ago on cakes is not in style anymore. Right. So, you know, you, don't need, you can get rid of some of the stuff that you're probably not going to use again. Did you say you have cakes that sit out for years sometimes? It's display cakes, yeah. Display cakes. So the foam cakes, yes. And is that, that's fondant? It's fondant, yes. Okay, so it can last a really long time. Yeah, it, uh, I have display cakes up on shelves in, uh, well, it was in my studio when, my, I, when I had um, my storefront, but uh, there are a couple of cakes that I created that I just love and I can't throw away. So I actually have cakes throughout my home that I love and they have been there, gosh, I closed my studio storefront um over five years ago and they're still there and they're still great so they get a little dusty you gotta dust them off every once in a while <laughs> but other than that they will last as long as they don't get wet or too hot and the animals don't find them that's that's can sometimes yes. be an issue as well well, our viewers are really loving the interaction between you two and are taking away so much helpful information. So let's throw Good. our final polling question oh, out because <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a fun one. Okay. Um, so the final polling question is, do we want these two lovely ladies to continue to compete or should we ask them to collaborate? <laughs> <That's so nice. laughs> I think you guys would like to collaborate. I think so. Oh, <laughs> then you can kind of have some of your cake parts back. Yeah, yeah right? but we can have all of our cakes back. It'd be great. Um, so we need everybody who's, uh, who's viewing right now to put together, your I don't recommendations know. in Unless the chat. Do you want them to, to them. compete As if it was on a or collaborate? And, they kind of and once you have done that, we will mm -hmm. tally the results and then share them well, that's the case, with then, both I'll Rachel and Anne. We going. just got to rethink everything again. Uh, yeah. If they All say right. so, maybe they'll just want us to, you know, throw down with each other. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody uh, keeps saying, "Why can't they have both? Why can't we do both on everything?" <laughs> both. They just want to let you guys do, do what you want well, to do. We did hand painting and airbrush. Yes. Was the, the only thing we didn't do so far is figurines, which you both kind of went. <laughs> well, <laughs> just yeah, because. Figurines. Well, first of all, I mean, glamorous and figurines don't really yeah. match to me. And also, they take time. Yes, of course. Um, to look good. And so for something like this, I mean, normally when you make a cake that has figurines on it, you make the figurine like way well, far in advance. Yeah. And well. I want to mention once more, because I see some um, questions here about signing up for the giveaways. Our next giveaway is going to be announced at one o'clock. And all you have to do to sign up in the chat there is share one of the things that you're enjoying most about this live sugar debate today. And then we will randomly pull a name from all of our various streaming channels in the chat and announce a winner. So that's for the next set of the Fat daddy -O cake pan. So definitely get your responses into the chat before one o'clock when we announce the next winner. How's that poll going? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We might have to rethink everything again. Oh, brother. And they're the same sizes. It's not like they can stack them on top of each other. I know. Well, the only thing that I could think if we do have to collaborate is we could put a separator in between. So oh, it'd just be really tall. Yeah. We have separators? Well, <laughs> we have cake boards that could serve as Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. Separator. And then we could stick things in there. We could cover it with stuff. <laughs> We only have an hour, but <laughs> right. Um, nothing like throwing it at us at the last minute, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are nearing the one-hour mark, aren't we? Yeah, so yeah we're getting we're, there. We're just gonna have to start assembling uh, here yes. soon if we. Yes, we are. We're gonna actually have cakes to show. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I just want you to know that I ate all the fondant that you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a stomach ache? No. Okay, it's good. It's giving me the energy to keep going. My okay. children sometimes sneak in. My daughter like eats it. It's, oh, I'm like, no, Piper, what are you doing? And she's like, not getting in her like mouth all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. I'm gonna leave this for a moment. Don't use the airbrush until I clean it out. If you plan to use the airbrush at all, I will not. 
I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm well, I definitely hit bright colors yes, on the did. nail here. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't like what I'm doing. Once again. It's very quiet with anticipation. What is, well, I'm, here, I'll give you some more questions because they're coming in so fast and furious, I can hardly keep up. But, okay. Um, one said, did I miss the name of the work surface plastic area they're using? That's oh. from Bingo. That's the name of the guest. Oh, oh, okay. Did I miss the name of the work surface plastic areas that they're using? So this is from The Good Cook, and that is one of our sponsors. And there is a uh, coupon in the downloadable uh, coupon book. So um, grab yourself an awesome mat from The Good Cook. I love it. It works extremely well. The, uh, the best part about it is it already has measurements and things on it. So when you're rolling out fondant or gum paste or those types of things, you can literally just roll it right there and know exactly how long it is without having to pull out a ruler. And it's just a nice, uh, nice surface in general to work on. Everything peels right off of it. It's fabulous. Amy had another good tip in here again, too. She says, I give my kids the extra overworked fondant to practice sculpting and yes, using the molds. I do that, too. That's she awesome. says, it's edible Play-Doh. Yes, I do that, too. <laughs> That's fun. You're it it you're is fun. Creating little cake decorators. Oh, yes, they are, minute. actually. That's good. They can both fondant to cake, which is pretty impressive. Does your son do it? He, um, he used to, yeah. He's 14 now, and, you know... Yeah, you're not 14 cool. <laughs> playing with Play-Doh isn't quite no. cool anymore. Um, he's actually very creative and very much an artist and loves uh, loves helping me in the kitchen. Oh, he's cool. super helpful. But usually what he does is arranges my stuff on my counter to say things. So like... Oh. Uh, I had sticks of butter sitting out, and he ended up just uh, arranging them to say "I love you." It was so Aww. cute. Uh, so yeah, he's very thought. He's a very thoughtful kid. Loves to do things like that. I thought that so. was going somewhere way different. Oh, <laughs> well. So it looks like we have an answer to our poll. Okay, ladies. what are we doing? Well, they've all been extremely complimentary of both of you, and they say they collaborate so well, so that's where they would like this yeah. to go oh, now, is okay. to collaborate. So this will be interesting to see what you do with all of these tiers. I have tiers. no idea what to do. Um, well, do you want me to tell you what I was going to do, and then you can tell me Yeah, this? you tell me what you were okay. going to do. It's so, a good time to hear the well, vision. Originally, I was going <laughs> to paint that all different colors. Okay. And then the middle tier, I was going to... Um, do a little some splatter with some gold okay. and do some of these geometric cutouts but just like random like you know what I mean like little organically yeah, rather organ than ge yes. geometrically and paint them a little bit to match got it and then the top tier I was going to put a little bit more of the burgundy and then I was going to accent with these wafer paper things and some oh, of these the sales flowers thing. yeah and okay sticks. what were you going to do <laughs> well I was going to go a different direction altogether. I had the floral pattern on my middle tier. Okay. And I wanted to make flowers out of modeling chocolate as well. Okay. So um, I was going to have the middle tier as the flowers, and then I was going to do just something geometric on the bottom. Okay. This is that. No. Right. So. But now my flowers, my modeling chocolate's so warm. I know mine is too. It's, it's not, not setting up. Oh, too I much. can just stick it in the fridge. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, maybe what we should do is pull out our tiers and, and decide how we're going to stack it. Yes. Uh, that is a good idea. So one of the toughest parts about picking collaboration for us, although I love the idea of collaborating versus competing. Um, because I love Anne, and I really didn't want to compete against her, not going to lie. I um, <laughs> was a little worried about that. Uh, I, um, but I love collaborating because I think that's an awesome, just it feels great to collaborate with somebody and not always feel that tension of having to compete and do better than somebody else. So that's the real reason why I'm glad about collaborating. But the problem with collaborating is we both started with a 6, 8, 10 round. And so trying to put two sixes, two eights, and two tens together are going to be more challenging. So um, we're going to think through our options. Yep. 
figure out if we can use all of them, which I think could be cool. I we think just we gotta have to decide use all how. of them now. What's that? Do we have to use all of them? Well, we don't have to use all of them. Oh, okay. I'm a little worried about the black now. Like the black well, doesn't fit with anything. Yeah, but so I added some black into these. Oh, did you? And I actually thought that, and I did add some black. I figured when I would oh, stack yeah, yeah. that, There's I would add black there. more darkness. Like Got after it. it was stacked. Just yeah, to, yeah. Because I was gonna do like that on, I was gonna do on that and then I was gonna Got it. see how it flows. Yeah. So we can, all right, well let's, uh, let's see. I'm gonna throw that in there. Hmm. I mean, we could make the smaller ones like separators, but that's really high separate. Like, like we could put that under on that and then put that on top of it. Oh, that's true. We could do that. So we could always ground our design with a dark base, like the black, rather than using the airbrush. We have to, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> and I'll add, I can add more black into that tier, like darker. Right. What if we, what if we don't use this one? Okay. What if we use the black and we don't use the top one then? Okay. And then we maybe combine these two with something smaller in the middle. Okay. Almost like a double stack tier, but something separating it. Okay. Um, and then we can top. put that one on top of either of those. Like it wouldn't matter. Okay. So would we, so in essence, if we put this one on top or this one on top, then we can do uh, some sort of separator in the middle, maybe with flowers or something else. Okay. I kind of feel like put that one first, because then the black will... Oh, sweet. Yeah. Right? And then we put a little bit more black, and then it'll carry. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I love that. Okay. Let me dial this one for the eight, okay. and I will find um, a six-inch round foam core board, and okay. we can... Uh, oh, a foam core. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. 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 I don't know what else we would use to separate because I don't no. have, we styrofoam. don't have like. I usually use styrofoam. Yeah, well, it's styrofoam, but it's a board. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, I mean, we don't have dummies here. Okay. No, we don't have See, any. See, we should have gotten the pillars. <laughs> we may have gone to a store last night uh, looking for any last minute inspiration and we saw pillars and we we're like, wow, they're still we pillars. We could use the fat daddy pants. <laughs> <laughs> we could. I mean, that is definitely an option. Let me see what I have. Okay. That's not good yet. So I'm not sure this is going to be the most beautiful cake. <laughs> is there any way that thing's going to fit in the safe? The safe cake oh, no, safe? Not that cake safe, no. <laughs> No, that's do you have cake safes that are big enough for yeah, something yes. bigger ones? Yes. Oh, Much yeah. larger. Oh, good. So, uh, so these are just foam core boards. This is actually what I use under all of my cakes because they're so stable. But the good part about them, like you could glue two of these together and then now this becomes a separator. You don't have to use cake there, but you have a separator or something to be able right. to put the same size tiers together. Or and then you can either cover that with fondant or you can stick things in. Right. You know? So let me get the hot glue gun going. Oh my gosh, this is super exciting. So while you guys continue to work, yeah. I'm going to announce our next okay. winner. I you were on a this is of the <laughs> Fat daddy -O cake pan set. So this is the third set of pans that we've given away. And the winner is Tasha Height. So Tasha, if you hey, would, Tasha. please email your contact information um, to social at creativecake.com. If you want to download and one of our team members together. will be sure to get that over to you. So congratulations to Tasha. So we've had we've had five winners so far. We had three before our break, Michelle, Dina, and Janet. And we've had Danielle and Tasha since after the break. So we still have some amazing things to give away. But we want to remind you that you guys can be entering your comments in the chat on any of our streaming areas. So whether it's Creative Cake Design website, the Craftsy website, YouTube, or Facebook, we are compiling the information you're putting in the chats through all of those different streaming channels. So feel free to do that, and then we will know that your comments are being incorporated not only into the the polling that we're doing, which I think we're pretty much done now. We're just oh, going to let you guys thank, do this. Thank you. <laughs> Please. There's only an hour left. There I don't seems think we can to add be, anything else. There, yeah, there seems to be enough going on in the last hour here. Um, so we're all done with the polling, but we do still have some fabulous giveaways from our amazing sponsor. So Fantastic. With that, this is really pretty. I kind of wish I had a close-up view 
We need a camera like looking <laughs> straight down on you guys because there's so many amazing details going on with your fingers and how intricate the work is. So uh, for those of you uh, who do know me, I love the color purple and we're probably not going to get full on purple in the cake um, anywhere in decor. So I'm using straws. And I'm using, <laughs> so I'm going to get my purple in there anyway. There you go. FYI. I think they put some purple in there. Yeah, there's a little, a little purple there. All right. Well, you guys keep at it. Okay. We'll check back in here in a little bit. So then if we do some geometric cutouts, maybe, to match yeah, the, the colors? Yeah, I think that would be great. That. Do you think we should do a combo of colors with those, like you did with this tier, or I feel like we should do like a main color and then add, like, random. Nice. Right? Yep. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm um, not sure what color, but let me think about this. You don't? I, I don't. Some of these decorations I made that I wasn't really sure what I was doing with them, I was kind of, kind of, like, prop them up with some of these sails like in corners oh cute but i okay. didn't know if I, I wasn't sure if i was going to airbrush them or if i was going to keep them white but we can always i don't think we should do white though that's what i'm trying to say do you <laughs> <laughs> do you oh this is my other idea the epiphany i had in the bathroom okay <laughs> <laughs> my epiphany was i was going to watercolor these uh-huh so they're all different oh i like that and then they will look well i'll watercolor a piece and then i'll cut it out sure yes yeah let's okay. do it okay great wonderful um, okay. And we decided... Oh, sorry, one more thing. In between, though, we could throw a couple of those and those in just to oh, yeah. solid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we decided this year was next? Yes. Okay. Okie dokie. So I'm going to say one more time to please, if you are a winner of some of our fabulous giveaways, please email in your contact information to social at creativecakedesign.com. I should paint first and then cut them out, right? Yeah. That'll be easier. Yeah. We're having some questions here on the chat from Colleen, um, wanting to know what TV experience you both have. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, well, we have both competed on Food Network Challenge, which is how um, we met originally. And then uh, we both were Craftsy instructors for a long time. And they did a big gathering and we were able to meet up there as well. So that's how we've become really good friends. Um, I uh, have not competed on any other shows aside from Food Network Challenge, uh, but I recently was a judge both on Buddy versus Duff season three. Uh, and I was also a judge on Hulu's newest baking show, which is called Baker's Dozen. And that was a really cool experience just to be full on judge. I got to taste everything. It was like a dream come true. <laughs> you know, you always, you always want to be on the other side of these competition type things. You don't, uh, you don't always want to be the competitor right. getting all these twists and turns thrown right. at us. But yes. um, yeah. What about you, Ian? Um, well, I also, Food Network Challenge, I was on a few of those, I think three or, I can't remember how many. And I was on two of the TLC Cake Off, Ultimate Cake Off, that was kind of short-lived. Um, and then I did a competition on Rachel Ray. Ooh. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Um, I also did a Food Network special where we built a life-size wedding dress cake oh. for the bride. Oh, and they came holy. and filmed us. That was pretty cool. Um, and then Craftsy. I feel like there are some more random ones, like little interviews on CNN and things like that, but I don't remember them all. Yeah, I uh, was also on um, one of the, one of the things that I enjoyed doing was, uh, I like to travel with my cakes, and so I got to travel to the Today Show. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, in New York City, both with and uh, with cake, and then um, one of them was for the Kathy Lee and Hoda Show, for when the Broncos were in the Super Bowl ah, for the 50th Super Bowl. So I got cool. to make helmet cakes and they sat on their desk and they had no idea they were cake. That is which so is kind cool. of awesome. Until they cut into them, of course. That's very cool. And then uh, they were so excited about that that they invited me back to create a wedding cake for uh, one of their couples who met on the Today Show Aww. and then got married on the Today Show. So that was really cool too. But yeah, I, you know, these types of experiences are always exciting and a learning experience oh, and sure. <laughs> it's uh, fun more than anything. A little stressful. Yeah, I mean, you know, they always throw things at you in the competition ones anyway. 
at. Yeah, kind of like you guys are doing today. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, we usually have a whole lot more direction. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, a lot more direction from uh, from the TV shows, to be honest. Yes. And we usually know the theme going in, and we don't know all the twists and turns that they're going to throw at us, but we certainly we know, know yeah. many of them. Yeah. Uh, we kind of know what to expect, and especially once you've done it uh, one time, you kind of know there's going to be lots of twists and turns. Yes, for sure. All right. So one of the things that I uh, like to do when I'm uh, stacking a cake and putting um, a faux tier in the middle is I actually like to decorate the faux tier while it's up here uh, because I want to make sure that my fondant covers uh, everything. So I'm going to dowel this first. I'm running out of purple dowels, so oh no. I'm going to have to switch to blue. Oh my god. It makes me sad. It's not good, guys. <laughs> Look, I'm putting purple. See? Yay, purple. <laughs> I'm going to add some darker in there when I'm done. OK, awesome. OK, the collaboration thing is making me very happy because I don't feel like I would have finished my yes. cake on my own. Not going to lie. Yes. I agree. It's more fun. It is way more fun. I mean, it would have been nice if we knew from the beginning, just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have been way better. And maybe had a plan going in, too. Yeah. But this is showing your true talent. All right. <laughs> is, that, is that what it is? Yes, the, your ability to think on your feet right. and well, that change we, gears quickly. You have to have that ability or learn it because, unfortunately, a lot of times cake does not go as planned. Correct. Um, so many times that I would take an order and... You know, you think something is going to be easy, and then it turns out not to be, um, or something falls apart on it, or um, it just doesn't work, and you have to kind of MacGyver uh, your way together. Mm -hmm. And there are other times where you think something's going to be so hard, and you're like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> that doesn't happen as often. No, not nearly no. as often as you'd hope it does. But uh, you have to be able to kind of adapt. I think that's what people have been enjoying most, though, is watching you guys. Switch gears. Switch gears and, and have, you know, have little things that you have to, as you said, MacGyver or fix. Because um, clearly, it, this doesn't always go as a perfect process at home either. So It doesn't. It is very rare that I make a cake from start to finish without any problem arising oh, yeah. at some point in time. Be, and the main reason for that is just simply because it's food, it's cake, it doesn't mm -hmm. always react the same. Even though it's cake and it's buttercream every single time, the humidity can change the consistency of your fondant or change the consistency of your buttercream even. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you overcook or undercook something and you've gotta to adapt to that and redo it or whatever the case may be. So um, I think that's what's so appealing to me, to be in this industry is because it's very rare that I do the same cake twice. It's very rare that everything goes smoothly. And so I'm constantly thinking and brainstorming about what else I'm going to do. How am I going to do it? Um, what will happen if it doesn't work? How do I make it happen? Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had to think on my feet because something didn't go right at the last minute. And I'm like, a nervous wreck and scrambling and screaming at my husband to help me <laughs> because oh, yes. I'm not going to get it done if I don't, you know, if I don't change gears and switch up. So I feel like that's a lot of what our industry is all about. Yes. And there's probably a, a group somewhere for the husbands to. Yeah, I'm sure there is. <laughs> a support group <laughs> Absolutely. for all the emotional turmoil they've been through. <laughs> what color are you thinking here? We'll have the mm. turquoise up and then the pink. Do we put black? You want to do black there? Here, let's see what this one looks yeah. like. Thank you. I feel like I might just recede then, the black. Ooh, right? that actually looks cool, you guys. It does look cool. I'm kind of excited about that. I'm digging that. Do we want it to blend or pop out? That's the real question. I don't know. That's so cool. I think black Well, what are cool. we going to, are we going to put anything in there or let it I don't off? know. I guess it depends on, I mean, we, we could make more of these things, but change color and have them coming out. Oh, that's cute. But the ones I have, I don't know what will work, but okay. Yeah. But I have all these little fun ones that we can see. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go black. Go black. And if we stick something in there, great. Okay, and if not, we, it's fine. Yeah. Let me move this here. So maybe this is a good time for us to announce our 
um, next giveaway, which is the mini cake safe box. Yay! It doesn't feel very mini to me, yes. but apparently it is when you start layering all these tiers. It's the <laughs> smallest of yeah. their boxes. But have no fear, it is certainly still effective. It's how I transport most of my groom's cakes or even just my two-tier cakes, my little two-tier cakes. So they're still chatting about this uh, since we mentioned it earlier. So I think this is going to be a hot one. Um, <laughs> but to enter your chance to win this particular prize, leave a comment in the chat box and tell us what is your favorite part of the live cake decorating competition, the sugar debate. Again, you can use the website, the Creative Cake Design website, the Craftsy website, YouTube, or Facebook chats. And we will select a winner at random from all of those submissions and we'll announce the winner by 1.30. So we have 15 minutes to get oh, your comments in there. All right, we don't have much time no, to finish I'm going to let this dry a little it. before I cut it out, I think, right? Do what? Let that dry a little. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. I love the gold. Should I, air? are we going to use these things? I don't know. I think we need to focus on what decor we're going to put on the black. Because otherwise we're not going to. Oh, oh this. right. Yes. Okay, okay. Sorry. So what are we doing on the, are we doing anything on the turquoise? I don't know, but I think we need to do some something. Gold splatter. Oh, gold splatter. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I splatter that then now before you? Yep. Oh, should I? No, you don't have to put it on. No, well, it's but fine. But then it'll splatter everywhere if you do it later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. These are the conversations I have with myself yes, usually, yes. not with a partner. Yes. <laughs> well, do I do it now or do yes. I do it later? Right. Those are the types of things that you need to think about though if you are, you know, if you're at home decorating and you're trying to decide what to do next or what what sequence to do things in. Honestly, just thinking out, well, if we do gold splatter on the turquoise cake while it's stacked, everything else will get gold splatter too. So you have to be really careful about your process and when you're doing things before stacking or after stacking. So should we, I usually airbrush it with Everclear to get this stuff. Yeah. Should I do that first? Uh, yeah, but this needs clean, oh, okay. so hang on. Here, I can clean it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> She's very helpful today. <laughs> Gotta earn my keep somehow. Do you have airbrush cleaner or just use Windex? Uh, I just use the Windex and yep. then rinse it. They're really loving this collaboration, you guys. Yay! <laughs> I am too. It just took a ton of stress off. Yes, my this shoulders. is way more fun. Yeah. Plus, if we fail miserably, we did it together. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to fail, no. Anne. I was a little concerned. I was definitely concerned I wasn't going to finish, which I think is the concern of every competitor on every baking show. Yeah, because you think you have all this time, and all of a sudden, and you don't. It's like, uh, you do wah, not wah. Have time. Okay. Do you still have piping gel out? Yes. There. Sweet. One of the 40 bowls I have. <laughs> so piping gel is a great medium to put on styrofoam because it fills in a lot of those little gaps and holes. It fills it in better than like just using straight up water or um, even mm -hmm. alcohol. You definitely could use either a royal icing or a buttercream here too, but I just feel like it's a little wasteful. I'm airbrushing with the grain alcohol, and as you can see, it takes off all the powdered sugar, um, which is a great thing to do on black or any dark colors. Um, often at the end of when I decorate my cakes, I'll put some pearl luster and kind of give the whole thing a little squirt, and it, it gives the whole thing a nice sheen. Is <laughs> the black here anything? Is it? Um, it might oh, need I some. Can, I can leave it in here. Yeah, leave it, and then if we have time, yeah, let's try it. So somebody asked earlier on, and I'm forgetting who it was now because the chats keep flying by, but they were asking Sorry. what cake projects you're most proud of. Ooh. That's a good question. Do you have any that stand out in your mind as being all-time favorites? I mean, the, li the lace Besides wedding this one dress. right now. <laughs> the lace <laughs> wedding dress is pretty That's intense. pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then for me, also, one of our... The ultimate cake off ones. We did a Legoland cake, and oh, just I got called everywhere. 
and we made this really cool cake that had a, a working water slide, the little mini figs oh. going in, and uh, it I rotated and lit one. up and all that. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I would have to say that my most proud moment was uh, the geode cake uh, yes. that I created uh, five years ago now, maybe maybe six, five, I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, and the reason for that is just because it was so unexpected for me to go viral. It was not a cake that I thought um, would, oh wow, you just got gold everywhere. I know, that's what I just said. <laughs> um, this is it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be real interesting. I was and neat for three You're hours. not going to get invited back I after that. I was neat for three hours, okay? <laughs> that is impressive for me. Thank you very that much. That is pretty impressive. I agree. Um, I think more than anything, uh, that geo just surprised me, which was awesome, but it also... It was a sense of validation that I not only could be creative, but I could set a trend and really influence the world of sugar art, which I think is a huge accomplishment for anybody in the industry to be able to, uh, to have a cake go viral. Um, so that's definitely my proudest moment. But my probably one of my favorite cakes um, that I've created is my next one. <laughs> ah, good answer. Bum, bum, bum. Good answer. And the reason for that is just because it allows me to be creative again and do something hopefully that outdoes the cake before it. Um, that's, that's always my goal. It doesn't always work that way, but that's always my goal. Plus, don't you feel like sometimes you're like in it, you think that some, I think something's really great and you look back and you're like, well, what was I thinking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Should I paint the top of this? Or just leave it white? Um, yeah, let's try to get, yeah. well, I was going to scrape it off. I was cleaning my knife. I okay. was going to scrape a little uh, black off, and then we can. I mean, do you want paint? you want to leave it white? Oh, yeah, if you're going to do yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Leave the black there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It'll save us a step. <laughs> OK. Oh, oh, my goodness gracious. See, so much um, going on. For everyone watching, Rachel is like one of the people that I can always aspire to be, who <laughs> can do all the geometric, everything is very neat and precise, and I am, as you can see, a total <laughs> disaster, um, and I, when I start to work, things start flying, and, uh, which is why I wanted organic, but, so it's, it's always fun when someone like Rachel and someone like I get together, because Absolutely. Um, the two strengths together can make a masterpiece. <laughs> I agree, and I agree. And it's definitely, for me, like, I decorate alone, like many uh, cake designers, we, we decorate alone. And that's mostly because um, typically we're starting out just decorating for ourselves or for our family or for our friends. We're not necessarily doing this as a business from the start, but oftentimes it turns into a business, especially if you're really good at what you do and you really enjoy it. And um, I think, so many of us never really think we're going to be in this industry, but it, it kind of happens. And yes. um, I don't know where I was going with that now, but that you work alone. That I was what? You work alone. Oh yeah, I work alone. So it's really nice to actually have somebody to bounce ideas off of. Uh, yeah. See? And she's <laughs> now she's finishing my sentences too. It's great. <laughs> It's just super helpful to have another creative person to yes. bounce with. Yes, because a lot of times, half the stuff that we do is that's beautiful. very, like, last minute. Like, oh, that doesn't work, so let's do this. Right. There's lots of thinking about um, what might work or how do we fix this. And yes. uh, those types of things happen better when you're working with someone else to to have those conversations. So if you are working on your own, you can always hop on Facebook chat pages, post pictures, ask questions. Um, you can join the Creative Cake Design Facebook page too. And those people are the ones that become your Anne, your Anne to your Rachel. Um, it, that's how you're able to collaborate with somebody else if you are working alone and you're in your own home and you don't have the ability to brainstorm with someone like this. Hop on the chat, hop on Facebook, hop on social, get some ideas that way. Okay, okay. that looks amazing. Well, not amazing, but it's fine. We need, I want to stack that, but I also want to get, here, let me dowel this one. That's really cool. Oh, that's all right. Such a, oh, stop it. <laughs> this is against everything you probably believe in. No, it's I fine. love this. Okay. This is amazing. <laughs> Look at this. This is great. Can we zoom in on that? 
<laughs> we all know who's cleaning the table yeah. when we're done. I'll clean it. Uh, I'm cheesing. All right, should I start cutting these out? Okay. Focus, focus, focus. I guess. Is this Brian? We have to start cutting them out because it's only half, half an hour left. Uh-oh. Ah! We don't even have a half an hour no. left because oh, we have to present right. at like 1.45. Maybe we'll squeak it out. Okay. 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 Ask for more time. Should we get more time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, guys. Our here's another poll. poll question. <laughs> The answer is yes, always more time. <laughs> Sorry, Jody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should have done this on black. Oh, I couldn't have done it on black. But now you're gonna see you could put black on black, though, because then it would be a cool texture rather than. No, I'll do some black, color. but I'm saying that I shouldn't have. You can see the colors on the sides, the white. Oh. But I'll just quickly go over. I it. think it looks awesome. Okay, well. Yeah, right. black would look good, actually. You're giving these viewers some courage. Oh, good. Uh, oh, DW good. said that um, I personally have been afraid to work with fondant, but now seeing this, I'm, I'm given courage. Yay. Yay. Um, and then William asked, when you are baking these cakes, does it matter if you live in a high elevation area or a low elevation area? And what can you do if your cake falls in the center? Yeah, if your cake is falling in the center, there's there's a couple of things that's happening. You absolutely need to change your recipes for high altitude. Um, there are some really easy ways to do that in order to accommodate high altitude, and that's typically adding more structure. So you're gonna add more flour, and you're usually gonna add another egg. Not always, but usually. Um, it depends on the recipe. Sometimes it's just an egg white that you're adding. Uh, it, it depends though. Um, so there are some sort of general high altitude rules like that. The other thing is don't disrupt your cake while it's baking. So that's probably the number one reason why cakes will fall in the middle is because you get too antsy and you want to check it and you go to tap it or put the toothpick in and you ruin all that structure of basically the reason why a cake will rise is because it's creating gas in between all the molecules that are within a cake and it's elevating the cake. And if it doesn't have an opportunity to actually bake and set and tighten up that uh, structure that's there, that's when your cake starts to fall. So uh, there's a couple things, like I said, adding an extra egg or adding a color, quarter cup of flour. Um, it depends on your recipe a little bit, but there are some measurements and some guides out there. And that's definitely something I can think about adding to creative cake design as we continue to produce content. Um, but it's, um, it's usually because people get a little antsy. Yes. Or they take it out before it's cooked. All yeah, they, if yeah. You, yeah, if it's not fully baked and you're removing it from the oven too early, then your cake's just going to fall. It doesn't, again, that structure has to be set before you. This looks very glamorous. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. It's, it's kind of fun and glamorous, not going to lie. <laughs> the bright color choices really took it yeah. to a totally different place, in my opinion. Is there a specific recipe for the edible paint? That's from Teresa. But edible paint. You mean like what I'm doing? Or yeah, yeah that went on, I think. Uh, so no, I'm just using gel color mixed with the grain alcohol. Um, and I just mixed it in a palette like I do normal paint. So you can just mix the colors together until you can get the color you want. And this is sort of similar to what I was saying before is that the food coloring is different than regular paint. So it does take some getting used to. Um, to Sorry. achieve. Oh, you're fine. Would it look cool to like put a couple random of these? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting too crazy. Yeah. Um, you can put one up and see what it looks like and take it off if we don't like it. True. That's the beauty. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm doing here is adding some stability to our cake because we have a double tall uh, tier here that's stacked on the next. It doesn't really, it, it's just got such a high um, base of support like center of gravity and so it's really important to make sure that this can't tip over in any way so three wooden skewers i do have a little purple hammer <laughs> not with me though <laughs> it didn't make the cut this time i stack my cake very differently than that you do yes what do you do i pre-drill a hole in the bottom of each board okay 
and I um, obviously dial this, I dial yeah. the back part the same. Okay. Um, and then I hot glue the, a thicker center dowel onto the bottom board, uh -huh. and then we drop the cakes down on oh, top nice. of that. Nice. Yeah, that works too. Yeah. So I know a fun poll question we could ask because I wish we could give you guys more time, but I'm afraid that we are done at two today. Yes. Um, is what would the audience like to see in terms of content on Creative Ooh, Cake Design? Yes. So if you would like to share what sorts of things you'd like to learn moving forward, that can influence some of the content that's available through the website. That so would be awesome because that helps me and helps me do my job better as the uh, managing editor of the site. I get to pick and choose kind of what topics we're going we're gonna to cover, um, but you guys are the ones that guide that content. So any feedback you can give would be amazing. So definitely add that information into the chat as well and we will here. capture all of that and share it with Rachel and that. team. Cover that thing up. Well, hang on, I gotta, I'm going to rotate it. Which thing were you? This thing right here, right? Yeah. Okay. So remember, there's always a front and a back. We're going to put this to the back. So if you have an imperfection that you're not happy about, um, then just put it in the back, cover it up, and you're good. Okay. okay. That's pretty. Oh, those are beautiful. Yeah. Once you're done, I'll stop. Okay, I'm almost done okay. stacking. Do you think that we should do it like kind of in spurts? Yes. Yeah. Well, they want organic, so. Yes, and we don't have very much time, so that just works out. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Are you done? Yeah. Do you want it on the turntable? Is it stable? The turntable or the cake? <laughs> oh, 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 no, let's just forget the turntable. I feel like. Okay. You move it to the middle? I awesome. Can do that. Oh, and it's 1.30, so we should probably announce the winner of the Cake Safe box. Yes, oh, big time winner here. Because this has been a popular item. So they're pulling the results right now. Sorry, I was going to put a border on that pink one. On oh, no, um, what one? The pink one? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's terrible. Oh, wait, I, should, I was going to put black ones in, right? We can, um, we can still put a border on it. What do you want? No, I, don't think, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe pearls? Yeah. Or just pearls. Are, yeah, pearls would be good. Do we want piped pearls or molded pearls? Whatever's <laughs> faster. Um, I don't know what happens to the pearls. Can you guys there. remind everybody what that smaller black tier is? This uh, smaller black tier is just simply foam core cake boards that are hot glued together and stacked just so that we had a little bit more height in order to separate the two tiers. I, I think if we would have put these two on top of each other just the way they were, I'm not sure it would have looked um, quite as nice. So that was uh, kind of the thinking behind it. Um. Oh my God, I keep doing the same thing. I keep putting it on the wrong way. There we go. Good job, yeah. All right, do you want help with that or do you want me to figure out what we're gonna do elsewhere? Uh, you can figure out what we're doing elsewhere, I we guess. Have, like, 15-ish yes. minutes. Yes. Figure it out. Okay. <laughs> Figure it out, Rachel. <laughs> okay. okay this okay. is crunch time. Okay, I have our winner. Our winner for our giveaway number six, the mini cake safe box, is Judy Denault. Ooh. Congratulations, Judy. Lucky Judy. Please yes. email your contact information to social at creativecakedesign.com and one of our team members will make arrangements to get that amazing giveaway to you. I think we're gonna have some jealous people here. On oh yeah, for sure. There were a lot of folks saying, I wanna win that. <laughs> Do I put this like this or like this? Like this, right? Well don't, are you lining them all up? Should I not? No! <sighs> it's organic, remember? I know, but I was gonna kinda. Oh, now I know what you're saying. Still make it pattern, but. Oh. Is that, is that how you do it normally? Sure. On the cake. <laughs> I started, There's no rules in cake. I started and... doing it like this, and then I was like, this is oh, like... oh, that works too. I this was thinking weird. we would just like. Oh, I see. You know, see. two or clusters. three here and there. Oh, I hear you, and the, because it's not geometric, that's it's a, organic. That's a better solution. Oh, what do we got going there? Um, There's no rules in cake. It's true. You can tell it is hot in here, you guys. Our cakes are 
bubbling up. So um, when a cake is cold and it comes out of a refrigerator, especially if it has fondant, it uh, changes temperature and things start expanding and air, when it gets warm, expands. So if you ever get a bubble underneath your fondant, just a little exacto knife and smooth it back down and you're good to go. Good tip. <laughs> well, since we're getting close to 1.45, which is the time that you both are racing towards right now. Right. Um, I'm wondering if we should put up our final giveaway. Ooh, okay. good idea. So the final giveaway is another set of the Fat Daddy-O cake pans. This is the two inch set, I think, that we have left. The two inch set. Okay, so in order to enter to win, all you have to do again is leave a comment in the chat box and tell us what your favorite part of this live cake decorating competition is. And the winners will be selected at random from all the submissions in the chats on not only Creative Cake Design website, but Craftsy, Facebook, and YouTube. This is the front right right here. Yes, because yeah. that's the back. Yeah, great. We're not spinning this cake around, right? <laughs> no, you guys only get to see the front. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is a one-sided cake. Right. All right, I got to put this mold in the freezer. <laughs> Looks like you're getting a lot of great suggestions here, Rachel, too, oh, for what sort of content people would like to see moving forward. Awesome. Hopefully our team can capture all that for me. Are you liking where this is going? I love it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's very glamorous. I think so. Yeah. I think some Super glamorous. And glamorous fun. person out and there. And fun, yeah. I think we kind of <laughs> yes. took everything and made it work. We're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> It's like when you're slap happy at the end and you're like, everything looks great. This is good. <laughs> yeah, sure. And slap is, it on. This is only four hours. <laughs> not five or ten or eight or however many of the other ones were. Let me just say it is not easy to decorate a cake, especially a three-tier cake in a four-hour time frame, without knowing what you're going to do. Yeah. Now, obviously, we kind of came in with some different molds and some different patterns and things, but I truly had no idea what I wanted to do in the end. No, I didn't either. Okay, hopefully that was cold enough. Probably not, but we're going to try it. <laughs> Tammy's asking Rachel if you'll be doing more tutorials. Lots more tutorials. There are lots of tutorials in the works already um, that have been filmed and in the queue and um, more filming to come. So yes, uh, basically with Creative Cake Design in this next month of December, there will be lots of new content uh, continually being added. And then once we hit January, we will absolutely have new content every single week. So um, what you see is just a little taste of what you're going to get on Creative Cake Design. And we will be uh, filming and posting more every week. <laughs> Oh, I'm laughing at some of these. They're like, my favorite part would be eating the cake. I'm <laughs> eating it with my eyes. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to as well. I'm hoping we're going to taste this cake. For sure. Yay. Um, We've got a vanilla and a chocolate. So my cake was all made with, I believe I had the chocolate cake, but I can't remember now. And Anne had all three tiers of vanilla, so... Um, are we putting this ugly flower on? It's not even That's up to you. Do you have one? Do we need to put a flower on? I don't have. I, I don't could, have a flower because I never got to it. I ran. Mine's out of time. not hard enough. I have a flower. <laughs> I, okay, so I have this situation, uh, but I, I could paint it. Mm. Oh, that's pretty. No, that's really not. Do we have any gold um, dragées in the middle that we can use? No, but I made these that I could paint. Gold. Oh, perfect. Yes. So where am I gonna put that? Because it's it's soft. Um, like on the top, like here or something. Oh, no, that's not gonna stay. Um, it. Okay, I'm not gonna just, hold. Maybe like that or like in here. Yeah, maybe yeah. we scratch it. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> ugly. Um, 
So well, we're gonna. I like some of those flary things. And what about the? Oh, the yeah, those. These are yeah. cool. Let's bring those in because I think okay. that will help. So we're gonna present this at about 1:45, and you guys are gonna kind of walk us through all the different tiers and how it all Three came together. To okay. Right. We're just kind of having here. I think up here. Yeah, I think that right. works. Okay. Rachel and Ann, you guys are going to give us a, a, a we'll walk give you a through. Rundown. Okay, a rundown on everything. But we want to make sure everybody sticks with us right until two because we still have the winner for the final set of Fat Daddy O cake pans. Yeah, you don't and we want to give you a bit more information on how to make sure that you get everything out of this viewing opportunity before you sign off. So definitely stick with us here right until two o'clock today. I don't know if I'm gonna have time for these pearls. To All right. Forget the pearls. Well, I mean, I'm trying. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, forget the pearls. <laughs> the other mold did not work. It did not work. We should mention that free download for the holiday coupon bundle again, too, because a lot of the tools and things that you've been showing today, um, it sounds like there are coupons available to get some of these things at a discount for some great savings. Absolutely. And please, please, please help support our sponsors. They have been so amazing, not only with providing you guys with all the giveaway items, but also helping us to be able to create these cakes by providing us with product. So yes. huge thank you to Satin Ice, Fat Daddios, Cake Safe, Bake Deco, um, Semi Cakes and Convections, and of course, Good Cook. Maybe? Ah, oh, yes. We have pearls. Oh, yay. Some. <laughs> Some. <laughs> you want a gold on the black tier, right? Because that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am just going to use a little water, I think. Or actually, a little piping gel, because it's right there. Okay. Oops. Man down. This is pretty. What? Oh, I dropped a pearl. Oh. Can I turn it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> As oh. you stick something on. <laughs> Maybe not. It's fine. You can turn it. I'll go back. It's all good. The geometric is coming in here too. <laughs> I know. It's kind of hard not to. We're kind of getting it all in here. I love it. I really, like this one. It's got movement. Yeah, that one's really cool. We should put that somewhere good. Okay. <laughs> Keep it for the front. I'm working yeah. in the back. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can put some ugly ones in the back to cover the seam. Okay. Do we want one there or no? Sure, why not? Okay. This is back. Nobody's going to see it. We're not showing you the back. Oh, right. We're not showing you the back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's only got a front this time. Yeah. You're not missing anything. It looks just like the front. <laughs> um, if we were displaying this somewhere, we would just put it up against a wall, and then nobody could walk to the back. That's right. You guys have two minutes. No! No, no, Jesus, no, 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 wait, no. I need the front. I need the front. I need the front. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Okay. I, yeah. Although everybody on here is like, I would watch these two all day. Aww, <laughs> that's so nice. Oh my God! No, stay. Where's the cool one? I lost it. Here it is. So I might just make a couple announcements here while you guys are doing this. Might yes. buy you a couple more minutes too. Oh, oh yay. Nice. Um, so we hope that you're gonna check out the Creative Cake Design, your online resource for all things cake, where you can find everything you need from basic instruction to advanced techniques. This is a community of enthusiastic cake decorators wanting to create beautiful projects with edible mediums. I also wanna mention that depending upon which platform you're joining us today, um, that you should also consider following us on the other platforms. So whether that's YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, definitely head out there to, fi to find Creative Cake Design as well as Craftsy.
Did you want to say anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. want me to keep going? Yeah. Extend it. Extend keep it. Going. Extend it. Well, we can mention our sponsors again. Yes. yes. That's great idea. Our amazing sponsors who gave away such awesome giveaways today. Um, and our final winner is going to be announced just before 2 p.m. for that last set of the this, Fat Daddy O cake pans. Oh, oh. But a big thank you to our sponsors, Cake Safe, Fat Daddy O's, Bake Deco, mm -hmm. Semi Cakes and Confections. Good Cook, and of course, Satin Ice. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is really okay. coming together. Okay, big one. What do you need? I don't know. Where do you want to put it? I don't know. Okay. You know, there's a little saying that I always um, talk oh, about I with see. my clients when we're doing wardrobe stuff, which is everything should have a buddy. I know. Oh! And I feel like that's what's happening here with how you're tying yes. in all the black together what, what, what and I the pastels like are weaving all the way through. You definitely have a lot of... There is Fun some budding going on right here. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> well, maybe let's overlap one here oh. and then you won't see that. Oh, good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, we're not showing yes. you. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was a good idea. Let me do that down there. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> yeah, you can just overlap that. Nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this one looks a little obvious. But it's okay. Where's that bottle of vodka? It's right down there. <laughs> little for the airbrush, yeah. little for me. <laughs> right? You need it after this. This looks terrible. Right? There. I need one little piece. So just finishing off um, the cake with a spray of airbrush, especially when you have a dark color like black, super, super helpful. It just gets any like excess Finger marks, powdered sugar. They're not super stable. So. Oh, got it. <laughs> Do we want glitter? I have glitter. Yeah. Whatever you, yeah, you want to throw it? Go for it. Okay. And. When in doubt, you throw glitter on it. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, add glitter. Yes. I feel like it's glamorous. Fun. It's very glamorous. <laughs> I'm gonna get I I our hot glue gun maybe going. Oh, right. Okay. Jody, you got anything else for us? Well, I was gonna say it's 145, but no, I don't wanna no, stop no. you. I don't wanna stop you, but I do think oh, I as you continue too. to do okay, some final touches there, maybe you can start walking us through what we're looking at, whose tier was which, <laughs> what your initial inspiration was around it, but how you brought this together collaboratively. Kind of walk us through the cake piece by piece here. Yeah, it sounds great. So um, if you didn't join us from the beginning, I actually made the bottom tier. And this was, uh, so I had a black tier and I actually had a white tier with some texture, some floral texture to it. And then Anne um, made the top two. And um, let's see, we have hand painting, we have splatter airbrush. Um, the airbrush itself uh, did not make it to this cake because we eliminated one tier, mm -hmm. two tiers, and we have molded pearls, we have wafer paper sails, we have some geometric shapes, we clearly have glitter now. <laughs> Sorry, I think I Anne just <laughs> snuck that in over top. I didn't even see ya. Um, let's see, so we did Glam. Mm -hmm. We did um, the flower, floral. The flower didn't make it, did it? No. no. Well, I mean, it's around. It just. It's, just, it's too hot in here. It's, yeah. it's not our fault. <laughs> you I, did bright. I'm hot. Um, we, we did make it. It's with the flower? Yeah, they're just yeah. not on the cake. That's it's cool. just not on the cake. But there's flowers already in the texture oh, and there's flowers in the painting. So that's okay. Yeah. You did All bright. Right. Yeah, we did, bright. we did bright colors and we swapped mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. <laughs> and then we collaborated mm -hmm. and I'm really glad we got to collaborate. So thank you all seriously for being able to help us collaborate. I think that was a brilliant move in order for us to actually pull this off because I don't think I could have done it without you, Anne. I couldn't do it without <laughs> you either, Rachel. We're going to have a nice cocktail later. Yes, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, this All was right, such geez. a fun way for us to celebrate the launch of the new website, yes. Creative Cake Design. We're so excited that both of you could be here. 
And thank you uh, to the entire team at Creative Cake Design for helping all of us pull this off for you guys. I'm so glad everybody was able to join in the fun and watching us create this cake. And I hope that you will check out all the information and tutorials on Creative Cake Design as well, because there's lots of info there. And do you know what goes really good with cake, you guys? Uh-oh. Bubbles. Bubbles! Oh, yay! So congratulations bubbles. to both of you Thank from taking you. this competitive cake decorating so competition cheers. into cheers. a collaborative cheers. one. Cheers. So cheers, cheers to you. And while you guys enjoy cheers. this hard-earned <laughs> sip, I'm going to go back to my desk and give us just a few closing comments. That I'm coming is. back for a piece of cake. Absolutely. I'm going to yes. start serving it up. And I think they want pictures, so yeah. definitely cut, cut from, from the, the back. back. Okay. Yes. So I'm heading back over here. We're going to do a few more announcements. Thing. Maybe just a little. Yeah, just a stitch. Let me give this to you guys too. Here's some of the for serving. Oh, okay. perfect. Okay. Do you have a knife? I do. Knife. All right, I think we can announce our final winner here for the last set of the Fat Daddy-O cake pans. And our final winner is Paula Bohan. Congratulations, Paula. Yay, Paula. Yay, Paula. I know everybody's been so supportive. Everybody's been cheering everyone on in the chats, even though I know they all were hoping that their name was being called. So thank you for being so good to everybody in the community. Um, Paula, we will reach out to you to make arrangements to get you that fabulous giveaway, but please also give us your contact information by sending an email to social at creativecakedesign.com. Don't forget to download that free holiday coupon bundle. We've been putting a link to that in the chats. Definitely take advantage of that. There's some great money to be saved there with those coupons for fantastic supplies and products, many of which we featured today. We want to thank our amazing live audience for joining us for this competitive cake duo, although I think we should have called it collaborative cake duo, you guys. Yes. <laughs> the live sugar debate. Um, thank you both to Rachel Tufel and Ann Keep for participating. Do you guys have any final comments you'd like to make before we wrap this up today? Yeah, go home and make some cake. Or you're already home. <laughs> make some cake. <laughs> I would just say, uh, no matter what you choose to do as far as your cakes and your designs, just remember that anything goes, have, the un have fun with it, be creative, think outside the box, and oftentimes you'll figure something out that you never thought was even possible. So I encourage you, if you're, if you're looking for new techniques or doing something a little different than normal, check out Creative Cake Design. We have lots of tutorials online for you to learn everything from the basics through building a giant cactus cake. So please check that out. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your feedback and your wonderful questions to the polls, despite our um, unhappiness with some of them. But, um, and thank you so much for joining me and for helping uh, create this uh, beautiful cake for our celebration. And thank you for so, having me. Yes. It's very Yay. fun. And Jody, thank you as well. I'm serving up cake. I'm coming over. Just okay. <laughs> thank you. After all this, you're going to cut it? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I just want to remind everybody again real quickly to not only remember to get that free holiday Sticker. coupon bundle, but also please check out our Creative Cake Design website. Um, we hope that you'll consider joining us with your membership. And I want to thank again our sponsors for today's event, Cake Safe, Fat Daddios, Bake Deco, Semi Cakes and Confection, Satin Ice, and Good Cook. And with that, we want to thank you all for joining us. We hope to see you again real soon. Have a great day. Yay! All right, time to celebrate with time cake. Time to celebrate. <laughs> I want to take a picture of it. <laughs> well, I'm just going to cut the back first. Oh, right. I'm going to be your taste tester. Oh, excellent. How's okay. that?
Well, there isn't a ton there, but small pieces for everybody to get started. This is the chocolate, yum, my favorite. All right. Look at how beautiful that is. Just for everybody to see the different layers. Yum, 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 yum. So eat it all. Just dig right in, right? <laughs> I'm gluten free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But thank right. you. That's true. Does, well, I'll enjoy your feast too. It does too. look delicious. <laughs> you are gluten free. Yeah? I am. Yeah. So that's good. A lot of people were saying that the comments online were really helpful for yeah. that. So yeah. mm. delicious. It smells really good. Mm -hmm. Enjoy, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day. This is love.